It was dumb, but I had fun. <laughs> what is up? We're live. No intro. Going in raw. What's up, Stony McInternet Douche? You are the first here. His, uh, his real name on YouTube is supposed to be Stony McInternet Douche. And I guess he changed it because I'm assuming YouTube was like nixing him. I'm not sure exactly the explanation. That's my guess. Huh. <clears throat> But yeah, what was uh, what was what brought you to a ten-hour stream yesterday? I uh, just BSing. You, you, you've seen my show. We just sit there and have a good time with the chat all night, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we try to get through a video uh, that Katie did, made a clip of of As and Eric, and I got so goddamn angry, <laughs> like legitimately angry. Like th these guys are such liars. Uh, you know, and if you watch it, it. Even my chat was like, yeah, I saw this shit, Dave. These guys really come off looking bad. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was like seven or eight hours into the stream. So I had a few drinks. Uh, and that really just oh, it hit me so hard. Huh. So I, I'm behind on Katie's stuff and trash because I caught some of morning trash today. That was nice. Surprise. I didn't even. Well. First of all, I didn't even go to bed till 6.30 this morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then my wife comes in at like 10 and she goes, what time are you getting up? I go, I don't fucking know. And then she comes in like an hour later. She says, uh, I think I'm going to go out. I said, you're going to go out? She goes, yeah, I don't want to stay now. So I go, okay. Uh, and I laid there for another 20 minutes and I got up and took a shower. And <laughs> And she, she, she didn't end up going out, but I felt bad, like sleeping the day away. Huh. It's not, it's not her fault that I'm up all night talking like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? But we got little watermark on the stream last night. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He's His a first, big supporter of you. Well, he's a big supporter of people he likes, right? Yeah. But uh, that was his first time ever live streaming and it was fun. Nice. Uh, How's it feel to like host someone for the first time? It's great. It's well, that's what I'm all about, right? Like Neon Thunderbird. He's I was the first guy he ever streamed with. And you're the first person I ever streamed with, right? <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. O officially. I think Katie invited me one night. Chris Bacon did. You were there on that stream. But then you got me on your stream like the next Thursday. So, hey, come on my show. So that was that. But yeah, I love yeah. the new detractors get highlighted by Rip a Goalpost. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's weird, though? Like last night, Angus, and I don't know how to control this stuff. So in my chat, my wife's name came up, right? Okay. Her first and last name and the year of her birth. And I thought it was my wife. Like, because, you know, I thought, because it was like four in the morning. Like, she, she's like, what are you doing? Get off the stream or whatever, right? <laughs> but it wasn't. So when I went to bed, I go, Thanks for jumping on the stream. She goes, what the fuck are you talking about? So, how, I mean, people are weird. Yeah. Angus. They are weird. And if you've ever watched my show, it's not a hateful show. We make fun of everybody. Uh, you know, we've got a show uh, that we're going to do weekly that JD, uh, Scotch, Discovery, all these guys are making clips and videos. Yeah. And I'm going to be the, and I'm going to be the host of it every week. They want me oh, to be like the smart. The commentator of the show. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be fun. It's going to be like a weekly hourly show. <clears throat> that sounds like, like fun. Uh, I'll definitely have. Yeah, it's like I want to watch everybody's stuff. But again, I'm subbed to like 500 channels. And of course, detracting mm -hmm. is my main interest as of this year. Because uh, Eric put out that be great, be great. And I that, you know, him and rip a goalpost in tandem trying to to own me or whatever. That uh, I just sparked a little fire with me. I'm being great, and uh, we're going to detract. Uh, let me say out of the chat some more. We got Tevin Daniels. What's up, Tevin? Tevin, uh, good friend of the channel. Thank you for joining. Says good evening. We got Backy, great guys. I'm assuming you're a guy. He says hi. Stony says some people are so deep in the grift that they don't even know they are lying. Oh yeah, I'll have to find it. Uh, Geeks, I don't know who it was. Geeks and gamers. Jer Jeremy tweeted out. Oh, like I've made 20 bucks for it. Uh, uh, now I got like 300. It's like, let the griff begin. And mm -hmm. it's like, you don't say that 
unless you're like purposely grifting like an entity, a person like Ripaverse, you know, Eric. Uh, he loves monetizing the haters, or that's how he. That's part of the the appeal that built him. And now we are monetizing him, and uh, people hate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, his people hate that. And yeah, it it's it's it. really weird, right? It's like if you can't take it, then you know don't do it. Uh, you know, if you like, if you can't take a joke, don't, don't joke with people. That's, you know, just... I'm kind of bad about that. But again, I was, I grew up pretty isolated socially. Sure. And so I love being sarcastic. That's my humor. It's not even on purpose. It's just what's come about through my life. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sarcastic. But then when people do it to me, cause I'm a kind of like, I interpret things pretty literal, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard for me to, especially if it's like text. It's I never read sarcasm. So that's how you know I'm like, what? And I'll like come across serious and it's like, oh, and then I'll appreciate it after the fact, but like I usually get stumped with sarcasm. Unless like it's vocal and I hear the inflection. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really autistic about that. Uh Scott Jur says, Hail Black Angus, hail Dave. Poor Dave, you need more coffee. Uh how much sleep have you gotten today? Coffee? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. Are you a tea guy? You don't do a, a soda guy. Oh, okay. Coke, I, Coke I've gotten into, um, uh, I always look in like the hippie section at Kroger or Walmart. Mm-hmm. They got these uh, poppies. Now, I'm from Oklahoma, so all soda is Coke. Um, you were in Arkansas for a while, so you probably heard that. Um, people calling everything Coke. What kind of Coke you got? You're like, oh, we got mm-hmm. Sprite, root beer, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And so- <laughs> Another thing, you, another thing you don't say in the South, do you have sweet tea? It's fucking sweet tea in the South. There's not even, <laughs> when I was growing up down South, all tea was sweet tea. It didn't matter. Things have changed, obviously, but yeah. when, I was, when I was a kid, nobody drank on sweet tea down there. Yeah. It, being up in Ohio and Yankee country, I'll say soda. Or to, pop, you yeah, fucking pop drinkers. Oh, oh my God. Well, these poppies, they're prebiotic, so I think they mainly use stevia. It has a little bit of sugar, but I think it's mainly stevia. It's got all these, like, juice extracts. Is that, and, like, pineapple uh, flavor? No, this is root beer, actually. Oh, okay. But, yeah, it's prebiotic, so it's for a healthy gut. I guess it's got, like, uh, cultures or something, like yogurt, essentially. It's a soda, but it's not – doesn't have, like, the pop-like um, – or yeah. or yeah it, it it's it's a little better of a taste than like uh diet coke or something like that with that aspartame so i'm trying mm-hmm. to avoid sugar and aspartame and so that's always been my dilemma if i don't pack a uh like a sugar-free monster it uses erythritol which is a sugar alcohol um you know i'm either like do i get the corn syrup or do i get aspartame with diet and i don't want either so uh I like these when I don't want a lot of caffeine and these are good too. They're not just like a sugar alternative. They're got some, you know, good germs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for joining Scott. Your I appreciate it. I got Tevin Daniels in there. Uh, Eric lies. will never stop. Ac- are you, are you Ac- monetized, Angus? Yeah. 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 Monetized. So do, when you, when you do live streams, do you worry about getting, you know, copyright struck or whatever? Does that bother you? Mm, I mean, uh, it's off. I'm, I'm kind of in between, like, do I monetize just the stream itself? Cause usually it's going to get hit with like limitations anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't even worry about it. Uh, I, I'm going the biggest problem route not monetizing the stream, but I think super jets are still available if people want to send them. I don't think strikes affect that, but I'm not sure. Well, when I get like, a place scotch is stuff or suit stuff. You know, it's all parody. It's all got different words to the songs and everything or whatever. Discovery all that. But every time I fucking look the next day, I have to dispute the, you know, because there's a copyright claim. It's like, I'm not even going to worry about this shit because I'm not going to make any. Nobody watches a 10 hour stream. Yeah. You're not going to get ad money on a 10 hour stream and make any money off it. Unless they're trying to gay up you and really do the work, they might play you at like double speed to f- try to find clips to like, haha, gotcha. Um, oh, yeah, maybe, 
Yeah. Akpad says the cow on the thumbnail is awesome. Great work. Yeah. I love AI. And um, again, rip a goalpost. Like I just passively made essentially an allusion to Blues Brothers, which I don't even know if I like Blues Brothers. I haven't seen it in years. I plan to watch it soon again to kind of uh, I want to get a Blues Brothers ensemble. The uh, the whole suit, the mm-hmm. fedora, the shades. I mean, I got Eagle shades from the stadium. So th- these these will suffice um and it's a little bit of me personalizing i guess but um yeah the whole joke was like i'm on a mission from god to take down eric and his company or well no it's it's my critical jihad is what i call it i will uh (laughs) correct eric by either putting him out of business or uh him writing the ship creatively with my scathing criticism <laughs> and gulpos i don't know if you've seen evs he's played that clip multiple times and uh, i'm like oh this i we, i don't understand gulpos if he actually is a ripetard or not but either way he's inspired me and so that's where the, the holy cow stuff comes from like the bishop or the saintly cow um he's really inspired me so he does kind he does kind of come off like a troll right <laughs> I think he's a double agent or he's in the Sturgis camp where he's so retarded. He doesn't understand the free publicity he gives. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those two. It has to be what's up. Nicholas McHugh. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, super oh, Nicholas is making content for the weekly show too, man. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah again, so many people to watch. It's hard to keep up. Well, you can watch them all in one hour on my show. <laughs> they're gonna make some cool stuff and we're gonna we're gonna play it yeah what's up and i told them all i told them all we have to make fun of the fucking cg people too when they do stupid shit because it's it's all fun and games it's all fair right everything's open oh yeah make fun of yourself the most yeah if you can't laugh at yourself it's like ha, ah, you got me again if eric could have just laughed at himself be like well i disagree because i know where i'm taking this but uh you funny chuckleheads you know you go right ahead um, right. He he's <laughs> again. He's he. I call it you know, and I got the black pass, so I can't. I call it nigonomics. That's what Eric's working under. The he left the hood, but the hood mentality never left him, and it's like it's completely shown now. I think maybe that was part of the appeal with people. I was just like, hey, there's a guy. He's like, he's not couth. You know, he's kind of raw uh what's his vernacular he's not churching anything up so you got like this like common man appeal to his rhetoric but oh he's read thomas soul and stuff so clearly he's educated but now he's like showing what a retard he is and the the jig is up and you see what, uh, you see what my sketchbook says down here uh i'm getting to it uh have you gone through the book <laughs> at the very bottom <laughs> oh i'm you're a whale yeah <laughs> i don't i don't work that way man uh, you know, it doesn't matter. My peak thus far is reacting. EVS had 250 in the chat. Uh, you know, I've, I'll stream to one person. Like, I'm just here to have fun. So, you know, I'm doing the overtime. Slowly but surely, I'm getting chipping You're away. You're working a lot of hours lately, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I work overnight uh, half the year. So mm. it flips back and forth every month, basically. But um, I got 48 hours this week scheduled. Plus, I'll probably do at least... Hopefully Sunday tomorrow I can do it 24 because you get double time for anything over 12. So um, that helps close the gap. Uh, let me see where I'm at. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Super Tiso. Nerd way. Uh, I'll send you a link if you want to join. Uh, I didn't realize. I mean, I realized recently I haven't watched your stuff yet, though, but you're a channel. So I'll send you a link if you're down to, to uh, critique uh, with us the detract and cope and seethe as it were i was going to call it detractor cast and tony's like wait i call my stuff i'm like oh i didn't realize because like i'll hop on his streams mm-hmm. and so i've never looked at the title anymore i'm just so, here i'm a body <laughs> so my bad on that uh tony when he was like that's my thing i thought like ha 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 silly and it's like oh it actually is whoops uh in my early days on youtube with especially star wars focused from phantom menace uh there was this guy i've talked about him like in that one video i did this year but um there's this guy sith kryptonian he was kind of like so me and rookie come from the phantom collective which was like kind of a second wave we were trying to start of mm-hmm. like high council inspired and uh one of the guys in the in the 
five man group we made was this guy Sith Kryptonian. And me and him had very similar kind of styles of essays that we would write. And he had the show with this group called he'd call the Senate. And so I made a stream before his to try to like daisy chain into him uh called the pre-senate it was just like what do i call this i'm like well easy just pre-senate subcommittee playing on governmental words and uh he he got fucking triggered uh come to find out that i so you didn't ask me i'm like well what the fuck i'm 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 shooting possible people into your stream to what so what the fucking problem none of your guys came up with pre-senate so fuck you and yeah eventually clearly that friendship went to shit showed his hand uh so it's funny it's like no i don't want to step on people's toes it's not like i'm just trying to have fun detractor cast makes it clear what this is for our little sphere sure yeah hey in youtube don't you have to be able to accept uh, uh when people want to send their stream to your your stream you know, like after they get done, they'll send, you know, we're going to send you guys over to Black Angus's show. What, what is that called? Oh, raids. Yeah. Do you have to, do you have to like uh, make that a thing? No, um, you don't have to. I mean, usually I'm not. I mean, if you, of... if you, if you want, if you want to do raids or get raided, I mean, that's a, is it something you have to turn on? No. No, you just tell people like, hey, they're going on. So you might make up a hashtag in your chat and they'll be like angus raid or btm raid you know <clears throat> okay <laughs> uh yeah norway i sent you a link and thanks for being a member i don't know if that's been for a while or not but thank you uh griffin should only be said ironically otherwise it's a scammer trying to swindle people it's ironic grift the job and or snake oil salesman uh you have discovered how to mess with me. Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm wondering what that's going to be. Detract accordingly, says Pike Bishop. We will indeed. Um, Enrique. In Colombia, all soda is Coke, too. It's usually pow uh, powdered for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is this Nerdway? This is me. What is up, man? Thanks for how hopping you doing? on. First time on the channel. I think uh, thanks for... Uh, uh, Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I need to catch up and watch your stuff, but I am subbed. I am aware of you. And I, I, yeah, I'd seen you on Twitter where I didn't realize you had a channel. So I'm like, oh, cool. More stuff to watch. Um, my problem is, uh, again, there's so much. I got like probably 800 videos in my watch later. And I try to knock out <laughs> stuff and download to listen at work through my earpiece uh, under my uh work um earmuffs but again i get i get suckered into oh there's a new like something about Seleucid empire or macedon or alexander so then like i'll waste like half the day at work listening to that i'm like fuck i'm way behind on everyone's stuff <laughs> <laughs> uh we got stoney saying hang us there's this thing called water try drinking it you shut the fuck up stoney i some days i drink 200 <laughs> ounces of water a day at the factory because it's so hot so i don't want to hear it uh are you worried about copyright we would need people to watch us to get struck <laughs> <laughs> uh fuck you stoney hey, again i don't really care boom her concept art was a scam it is it is indeed i haven't read any i heard, listened to evs read the first page i i'm going in blind you're getting my f raw reaction uh slevin colevra your name always trips me up and it was funny on biggest problem i heard him say your name for super chat and Vito says your name the same way so that works out uh we haven't gone through the book yet uh thank you for asking sketchbook uh super t so i think we're gonna is the secret detractor i think it'll be revealed he's a troll after ice on three comes out uh you mean when the what was it eric said he was shopping on twitter about uh an omnibus what do you mm. think of that mm. how, how can you have an omnibus with three uh issues i mean that's, yeah that's, that's barely a it's nothing. How can you sell a seven-page art book for 75 bucks? 
this is an omnibus. This is 50 issues of Spawn. Well, yeah. <laughs> and there's at least five of these, and there's probably going to be two That's more at least. Yeah. Usually, yeah, you get at least like 12 issues of a story before you worry about an omnibus. I think he's trying to make money any way he can, though, guys. He oh, just needs, yeah. He, he needs to just make some cash flow. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's he's revenue he's revenue dead. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, a million dollars. Wish I could fill with a million dollars. Like, well, when you're blowing, I did soft numbers. Um, my guess, being in Texas, I don't know what the like wages are normally for that kind of job. But I've worked in factories up here in Ohio and warehouses. Uh, you make between fifteen to like twenty five, depending on your job, uh, for a common worker, and. Uh, I think I did the for 12 workers for 40 hours a week, no overtime at 15 bucks. That's just for the wages, uh, like 1.5 million a year, plus whatever he spends on owning or uh, renting the warehouse. 18,000 a month. The equipment. uh, Mm -hmm. That's not including like paying for like new comic stuff flying people out if they're coming to texas um if he if he ever has to meet the uh brazilians at glass house there's a lot he's blowing at least two plus million a year on this operation that's why he's trying to churn stuff out now he thinks all right i can get maybe a million every campaign that's what he's hoping so let me get like seven million a year to actually stay in the green well, I'm sure when Good line. Ying and I guess when Good Ying and the Horseman come out, uh, he'll be rolling it. I can't wait for those. I can't wait for <laughs> a weird libertarian fireman subscription <laughs> hero. What is this out? How are you like? I can't wait because all he does is do w- obscure lore exposition for the world. Like that's how he learned about the Civil War, the War of Separation, whatever. And then, uh, oh, yeah, there's been these weird alien matters we've found. Um, And, yeah, he hops in and puts out fires with robots. He's he's like the lamest Batman. (laughs) (laughs) What what are you excited for? You're fucking lying through your teeth, man. But you you saw the art page that he showed everybody, right? No. Single page. If if you go to if you go to the Ripper Burst or twitter or somewhere he's got okay. the uh art page and the horseman character that's in the art page that outfit is not the one that he showed us when uh they announced the book you know in the oh. book it's like dark blue almost black in the art mm-hmm. page it's fucking olive green oh hell? yeah he's very blue and yellow in that candy yeah. light cover um yeah. are you talking about the snow one that you can barely yeah. see anything mm-hmm where there's an L train in Texas. Yeah. Great. Why would there be that much snow? Cause like, I'm assuming Eric's modeled floor spot is his stand in for Dallas. Even if he like actually puts it on a map at some point, like in DC or central city, wherever, you know, all these different made up cities. Um, which here's by the, the way, other, here's the other here's, two. Here's the other thing too, Angus, when he presented the video, you know, highlighting the art, he fucking put more snow in the screen more what the? yep because he thinks he's trolling trolls at that point like you know selling t-shirts to say 3d assets he thinks that's good for him his business it's not dude <laughs> it's not what's up katie how you doing oh we got some katie in the house uh let me catch you with the chest more uh wait uh niobe i see you what's up man yeah i backed i was able to back a niobe before it closed because uh, I remember, kept remember like, I gotta pack Niobe, wait for my check, and then like I check it yesterday. I'm like, fuck, it's closing in three hours. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll I'll hit you up after fulfillment. I'll I'll ask you in fulfillment, and so I can get the other digital stuff. Let's tight this check. So, uh, by the way, after- nice to meet to meet you, Nerdway. Huh, good to meet you too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sketch says. Eric never lived in the hood. He's from the burbs. I couldn't tell you. 
uh, just going off what he says and, you know, stupid rap videos and stuff. There had to have been some hood interaction. Probably his buddies. He's probably like this guy I knew who was from Chicago and he, he was never in gangs, but he was always like friendly with like the gangs that were necessary to be cool with. So like he, he could get by, there was a Sergeant I knew when I was in training uh, that more or less said it like, yeah, like I never did super shit, but I was like friends with people. So like I'd either use my own body size to intimidate or like my friendship with these guys to intimidate and get me by in life. So it might be something like Eric did in life. Uh, Meth Gator is probably the greatest idea since Star Wars, a new home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I do have some fun plan with it. I was talking Ricky, we're spitballing this. He was giving me like, oh, what about this and that? What are you thinking? I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, so Ricky, we're finally going through Breaking Bad. I've been asking him for years to watch, and we're finally watching it. And he's loving it. We just watched the episode where the cliffhanger is Hank, because of Walt, is looking back into Gail's murder in that file that the APD gave him. And he starts looking at pictures he's like, wait, why does a vegan shop at Los Poyos Hermanos, a chicken joint? <laughs> and it's like, oh man, the, yeah, again, the pride is like a big factor of Walt's downfall. And it's just, it's fun. Cause most of that episode is talking where it's, it's like a meta acting episode where, uh, Skyler's trying to script how they're going to talk to Walt uh, Walt Jr. and Hank and Marie about their uh, made up story that Heisenberg's been a gambling addict and that's why he's made all this money illegally to pay for Hank's surgeries and stuff. And just the thoroughness, it's like this is this feels like uh, that Barry show with Bill Hader. It's like a very meta acting show. Like that episode feels like that. It's like self aware, it's brilliant. Um, it's like, yeah, this is kind of what they're going to have to do to script this stuff in, in practice. Uh, either y'all breaking, I think Dave, you're a breaking bad fan, right? Yeah, of course. Yep. How about you nerd way? I watched a few episodes. I <sighs> did, didn't really kind of get me where I <laughs> wanted to get. So, well, it's funny cause they do a lot of montage stuff. A lot of times the openings will be like, oh, here. So. <clears throat> I mean, it's been out for like, it ended like 10 years ago. So it's on you th that you're facing spoilers now. Um, a big chunk of the show, the second half relies on this chicken chain in the Southwest called Los Poyos Hermanos. And the guy, the black guy from the boys who runs Vought, he is the ringleader essentially on the American side. He's really controlled by the cartel in Colombia. I think he has a history back there. Ultimately, find out all of this has been to build up to take out this family that killed his buddy that started him in the meth game. This has been a long, like t decades long setup for him. And this is why Heisenberg is key. So he wants to like stabilize himself to then take them out. And it's like revenge, but also just business too. And, uh, you know, it's just like, oh, he's got the cover of his chicken joint, whatever. Well, they actually show you. Oh yeah, here's like them filling the buckets of batter that's gonna go all across like Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, probably Utah, um, California, yeah. Colorado, and they like will mark certain buckets with the black light mark. And like that's the one that's got how many kilos of meth in it. <laughs> this is he's used his rest legitimate restaurant to move his meth business. It's hilarious. And it's like you see, and then later they follow back with that where it's like, oh yeah, we understand now these trucks are used to move product for both businesses and they've been getting whacked by someone. And so he puts his like PI guy in the truck to then kill whoever's doing this. Just the, the amount of detail to do with like obscure things uh, is, is it's refreshing for someone that likes film and likes like nerd aspects of well, how does that work? Okay, well, okay, sure, you got this, but that doesn't actually tell anything. They tell you, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you, Scott Church, for your faith in Meth Gator. Uh, I'm really bad at selling myself, but yeah, consider becoming a member. It's only a buck a month. Uh, I got a $10 tier two. 
Uh, if I get enough $10 people, then I'll start doing like uh, auctions. Uh, no, not auctions, but um, like raffles or prizes. The more $10 people I can get, the more I can put back into getting cool goodies to raffle every month. So consider that. Um, and also, link in the description, you can get my posters. Meth Gators, four available. Uh, I got Naomi Cox saying, hell. Hell, man. Uh, did you watch the B.A. Turner's debate? Oh, yeah. I got to do a reaction at some point. I'm not going to be here all night because I got work tomorrow. But um, I watched a little bit of it through Katie's watch of it. So um, it was very interesting seeing this little soy boy. Like the most vocal people for Eric on Twitter are just soy boys or retards. Like uh, <laughs> renowned, hell the lore. Like these are your like guys in the trenches. I'd I'd be really concerned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand. I don't know <laughs> if I was Eric and I was you know and I was running a company. I don't think I'd be wasting my time on Twitter trying to defend it. Just do your shit, man. Make <laughs> your stuff and and roll with it. Don't worry about what people say. You know. I mean you should have a feedback section for your store. Like, Hey, I like this part of the book, but there were some things I didn't and take that into account, but you don't need to get on Twitter and get, you know, just, he's just so thin skinned. Everything affects him. And then he wants to run off, run his mouth and talk about all the detractors out there that hate him because <laughs> he's, he's this guy now. He's that guy now. It's like, dude, because you are that guy. Now you're the guy that you claim to hate for all these years. You've turned into him. You, you've got to just run your business. And it's why it's, it's really funny to me that uh, he even knows who you are, Angus. Why does he give a shit who, who we are? Why does he yeah. care? Hey, one second. I don't know. Sometimes my computer laptop will do this. It's not like an old laptop. Um, my screen is black. I don't know what I'm clicking on. So I'll be carry on for a second. I just got to restart because I don't know what's going on. You got it. Uh I yeah, can't if, if 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 Eric would have just been quiet the first time he got the uh, the feedback from a uh, uh, anybody, yeah, anybody, yeah, yeah, just That's just you know, you know what, you know what, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna keep <laughs> doing my thing and move on. Just just move yep. on. He he shot himself in, the own, in his own foot here. He, he 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 caused all this problem himself, and now he wants to go around and he wants to keep fighting everybody. Because of what he started. Did you pay? Did you buy Isom? I did not buy Isom. I found Isom on a uh, read my comics. <laughs> nice. You can hear me, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't about to pay $35 for something that looked that bad. And then when I read it, I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I think, I, I think part of my brain leaked out by the end of the book. Now, Eric deserves my money. And that's why I, yeah, that's another thing on goalposts where I'm like, uh, he clipped me around the beginning of the year. It's like, uh, I'm going to destroy your company, Eric. I'm going to buy every book and review it. And they're, they're all the riptards like, oh, dude, should we tell them the flaw in his plan? And it's like, <laughs> no, no, no. See, this is what Eric hates. Like, I'm surprised. To, uh, I think Super Tisa is the one that shared it on Twitter. The uh, We'll be looking at the ISOM uh, art book. That was 75 bucks. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't been struck down, but maybe they finally figured out it only causes more headache for them to actually do this to detractors. Uh, you know, again, you see this in movies when they hide and they don't, they have the review embargoes and stuff for like mm -hmm. release day. That tells you everything about the faith in the product versus, oh, yeah, look, they're really either just banking on a name of the company or the product or they really have faith in it when it's like yeah they've had reviews for a month about it from like the elites of critics you know um eric wouldn't shop his stuff to bleeding cool or anybody um not that necessarily they might review it but he wouldn't even not? he wouldn't even tell us what the story was before it came out <laughs> yeah, we still don't know what the story is well, yeah yeah he, but he's got a he's got he had the whole he had the whole thing planned out two years in advance right he's had his whole world planned out talking about his bible for his yeah, universe three three books and he hires two ladies to run his lore now 
I guess your your plan's out the door, Eric, because he has weekly meetings every Wednesday with everybody, and they tell him that's not a good idea, and he says, okay, that's why I hired you. Oh, so you're, you're giving up complete control. All right. Wait, so. McHugh, what do you mean? Uh, I don't really know who Medicare is. I don't um, either. It's like a big name, but I, again, have no idea. Um, going on, Mersh and Gabe Hoffman. I don't know who Gabe Hoffman is. Is Mersh from uh, Revenge of the Sith? Revenge, Revenge of the Sith, yeah. Those guys are funny. Uh, Satisa says, to be fair, by the time Volume 3 comes out, it would be a 300-page omnibus. Yeah, well, this is an argument I had with Eric last year. It's like, you realize the length of your book, like, the first four issues of Spawn are about this length of pages. And you get a lot of mysteries and uh, unclarity about stuff, but you definitely understand the motivation of uh, Al Sims. I want to say you understand his motivation in the first issue of what it might be a 32 page book, but it's more or less a standard comic. And you, you understand already who he is, what his initial motivation is. Uh, you kind of, the, the real hook is like, why is he back from the dead? And how did he get this suit? Um, you know, it, it, it's like every time you get a, it's reminds me of like raised by wolves in a way where it's like every time you answer a question, there's like five more to think about. Um, but yeah, there's some sort of like payoff every issue you're getting uh, for like the mystery of who is spawn. What's his purpose? What's his direction? Um, Eddie Bruff says, Eric will be selling his bath water. Next. <laughs> 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 uh, after his project Ripa, Started bleeding out like a stuffed pig. So let's be honest, Riververse has massive investors. I I don't know. I'm again good faith. Eric says like there's no investors. I'm just gonna I'm going to assume that's the truth until proven otherwise. Now, if someone uh, from the company detracts or something, you know, you get speculation. I'll comment on the speculation. That seems uh, some sort of insider knowledge, but until it's validated. Again, he said the blade isn't behind it. Glenn Beck isn't behind it. So who knows? <clears throat> uh, don't forget the seven buck magazine. Eric isn't sure what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's like a quarter or less of a story that we can get more if he's getting enough backers. I, I might have to do a second backing to get that fucking magazine. Cause it seems like it's going to be worth just, you, just, you just have to get the five dollar a month membership and you still get the magazine for free really mm -hmm. at any tier membership on ripaverse website will get you the magazine the seven dollar magazine will be yours if you have a five dollar membership oh see that was the problem i'm like damn it i actually should have got this and i'm gonna have to pay a second amount of shipping that was that was my my hold up on it uh we got katie she's going live i think at nine so we'll definitely um i'll probably still be going with y'all but i will uh, have a moment of silence to uh, let y'all stream raid if y'all are interested. Uh, I suggest it, but uh, whatever you got. Uh, Grim Jim 666 says Eric said he has many suits, or was it some repertoire that told me that? Do you mean himself or Isom? <laughs> uh, everybody up in the club. What's up, Dungeon Master? Yeah, man. Uh, I don't put people on if I'm not interested in their book. Sometimes I, I don't have the money in time to back before it closes and I'll, you know I'll try to follow up and get it on the back end like uh oh, who's that guy edwin the ace took me a while but i hit him up and through paypal got his two issues of the the ace and uh it ended up working out because if it was just the first book i backed him at the start i probably wouldn't be back for part two but uh just because it's still kind of running the mill superhero setup but issue two is like all right this guy is already starting to like differentiate himself from like the uh status quo of the first issue um the art book had as bad as i heard i've only seen two pages showing the biggest problem uh yeah i'm like i think ethan, i think ethan was streaming it on his morning show and i turned <laughs> it off right before he started same yeah uh question is Meth Gator, a man that turned into a Gator Man because of a new meth formula that alters DNA, or is he a Gator that has turned into a Gator Man because he ate a man who was high on meth? Um, <clears throat> well, the first half is interesting that you're already on that track. Um, so just keep that in mind for the future. But for issue one, uh, you'll understand that the meth 
it changes meth gate uh, it changes a hatchling um because the story's gonna start in february and instantly i realized like wait caters don't hatch in february so i had to like shift it to their hatchlings they've been you know around for a minute and georgia is temperate enough that most of the time it never gets cold enough for gators to just uh do their weird water hibernation so it's just like you know again i'm trying to write kind of plausible i like learning science so certain things in comic sci-fi like irritate the fuck out of me when i know something scientific like the predator just really pissed me off um because i like learning about evolution and primatology so when you try to say autism a social deficiency is an evolutionary breakthrough that predators would want to gene splice with i get really pissed off that <laughs> it's just like scientifically <laughs> dishonest to say a primate including us would have a social uh dysfunction be an advantage it's not like sickle cell where oh actually black people were great slaves because a lot of them have sickle cell so the mosquitoes can't pass malaria to them like that's a weird dysfunction that can be advantageous autism is not advantageous you can be smart and not have autism uh lots of people have done that <laughs> you know rain man is not what you want to make like a i don't know, google out of you know just because you can do math good it's like you're gonna have so many problems trying to like yeah uh but yeah he is an alligator that is morphed it's classic tmnt kind of setup I was going to start researching weird science about genetics and the Fox P2 gene to try to make a narrative. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's too deep. It's a fucking comic. I don't got to go that deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, he could have probably made a bigger successful empire. If he focused on the chicken and quit the cartel business. <laughs> uh, no, the chicken is a good front. So. Unless you're talking about Eric, then I'm confused. <laughs> uh, yes, I have been told I'm not a serious person yet. I uh, He tweeted something, Sturgis tweeted something about getting doxxed or people threatening to dox him or something. And I'm like, don't dox people, even ripetards. Or I'm like, even these pieces of shit should not be doxxed because that's just bad. Don't do that. It's not funny. Dox people. Because um, it's like, at the minimum, some sort of weird intimidation tactic. Um I'm not for that. We're talking about comics. We're laughing at idiots making comics. Doesn't have to get to the point of people worry about like their. their it's gross, like, man. It's yeah. really gross. It's like doing that to Dave. Ripetard's doing that. They, yeah. they, you know, they have no bounds. But you know, if you're a weirdo that's gonna like look into people's info, keep it to yourself. Right. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's really gross. Like it just be your private, contained hobby that does not spill outside of anywhere. Um, and always keep the family members out. My family has nothing to do with this. Hmm. Nothing. Uh, yeah, well, and, I was going to say, what does your wife think of you doing wacky long streams talking about a uh, funny she watches, guy? She watches most of them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like literally 10% of my show is Eric July bullshit. Other than that, we just get on the stream and have fun talking about like I was at uh I was at the thrift store yesterday with my wife and I had a great day because I got this movie for a dollar fifty. Oh, nice. And then I got this for a dollar fifty. I've not actually watched Deliverance. I've I've seen like maybe 20 fantastic movies. movie, but for three bucks, I had a great day. Right. And the discs are pristine. It doesn't look like they ever played them. That's how good they look. So yeah, I had but that's dude, we talk about classic movies, classic music, all that stuff. It's just a fun stream. It's not here to just be negative all the time. <laughs> it's really old. Uh, that's why I left the fellowship. The fucking negativity is just overwhelming. You're just like, nothing's good. Well, there is good stuff still. Oh, man, really there's is. lots of good stuff. You just have to actually look for it. And also, it's probably not popular to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but on the flip side, it not being popular, you could like lead the forefront for it to get more popular. You could be the weird little niche channels. Like, yeah, they covered, I knew about this red letter media to this or million plus channel. And I don't know what money pig made with Nick cage, but Oh my God, that is a beautiful film that I learned about because of them. If I didn't watch their like spoiler free review, I probably wouldn't have like given a Nick cage movie made today by a, 
first time director a chance <laughs> but they have like they i have a rapport with them as like a viewer i know kind of the bounds of where i agree and disagree so when they pitch something uh that's new unheard of uh depending on like the field and stuff and what i'm hearing from it i'll i'll definitely give it a chance so yeah they're only here to grift they're only here to cause like they got real excited when the fucking uh angel studios was on tim pole and like hey yeah eric hit us up uh you know talk about making an ice song movie <laughs> and they it, that's that's why i'm like i write off that movie um outside of the weird politics around it is like these grifters are really pushing it to suit their disney narrative they don't give a fuck about the fight of um trafficking or any of that they're just trying to cozy up to any new studio that might catch fire if they're part of like boosting them you know it's like oh we're cool with them maybe we can cozy up the uh epic verse with the angel studios and get a more professional film made that's all it is i see right through it that's why i quit them years ago <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny people because of us are finally like oh they're all zeros i'm like how did you not see this Doomcock season three still talking about fucking woke Star Trek. It's a grift. He needs it to be bad to cry about it. Otherwise, if he said, "Oh, Star Trek's so good, no one's tuning in." People don't like Star Trek will tune into people crapping on it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. right? Yeah. After about the billionth time he said Kathleen Kennedy is going to be fired, I'm like, you know, <laughs> maybe he maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's why I like that's why I'm waiting for Ryan to be the bad guy of the group and finally be like. Eric July sucks. His comics suck. Like finally he's going to be the voice that speaks for the whole group to kick him out. You know, <laughs> when it gets so bad where it's like, Oh man, even our own chat is super chatting us fifties and hundreds to read crap on Eric chats. <laughs> right. Yeah. I understand. I understand. You know, you, you want to help a friend if, if, if he's actually a real friend and not just someone they're trying to, you know, ride their coattails with but eventually after a while you're gonna have to say you know what this guy's just putting out garbage why are we even backing this stuff it's yeah. it's yeah because you're you, you're but i was into it you're against you yeah. know the mainstream you're buying into the whole we're going to be different going to be different and uh you get sucked in man you do get sucked in you know uh and <laughs> if you after you spend the money, like after I spent the money and I got it, I was like, I've told so many times, as soon as I got it, I just told my wife, put it on eBay. This is bullshit. It's garbage. And I <laughs> sold it. And because I bought the, I want everything box, like $475 worth of that shit. Right. Uh, so I did that and sold it. And then <clears throat> I started watching closer to these guys. And I'm like, wait a minute, Gary's the comic book guy. And he's never mentioned once about the story or the creativity and I saw to anybody that trusts him as a comic guy, right? He's never done it uh, because he's trying to save some relationship with some guy that wrote a book, dude, you should be honest with your friend, Eric, dude, uh, you could do better. Uh, he should be honest. If you're not going to be honest, uh, Eric's never going to get better. If his friends are his biggest liars, if I put Chuck Dixon's name on it, you would all like it. Of course. <laughs> um, uh, Nav Shergol says, Bargaming Comics. I got Grimm saying, Horseman. That's why I look different. They have zero story, but excuses for days. Why is everyone talking about the art book now? Was it really that big of a deal for me to have uploaded all this? Yes, it was. I'm so excited. Uh, that's why I was like, dude, I'm surprised you haven't gotten struck by these f slurs because um this is very in hindsight like reading that yaira card being two years into this and then looking back at what we've got and it's like oh my god he was always writing this like yeah, i don't really have any answers but like there seems to be and you know all these <laughs> words was like oh evs just nailed it with the vagaries oh my god now i can't look away at that now i see it every just like, glaring and yeah, that's why, again, like I legitimately love these comics for how bad they are. It's like they're bad in such creative ways. It's like no one writes this bad. This is new territory. Um, and it's brilliant in, in a horrible way. Um, I if legitimately I love owning these. 
I knew he wouldn't give a lot of, you know, copyright strikes out. I'd love to do like an, an ISOM mystery science theater type uh, <laughs> stream where you're just kind of reading through it and just kind of ragging on each and every page. At some point, you can't hilarious. strike everybody. You can't strike that because you're, yeah. you're making it you're you're making it your own by d- uh, putting commentary over it. Yeah, I guess I better get start to work then. Yeah. Yeah. Again, he Definitely. struck he struck Geek Getaway Tony on Twitter, but he didn't go after the 4chan post, which was like he was just like, hey, there is the leaks on here. But he didn't share them. He shared the link about it. He struck him for that, but he didn't take down the 4chan post, which actually had the leak. So what's that tell you? It's the criticism. It's the like, ha, 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 go look at this. It's funny. People are roasting us. All right, Tiso, let's look at your thing. Um, your screenshot. So uh, I'm not sure if you are the guy that bought it, but you just saying someone bought this for 300 bucks on eBay to scan it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Um, yes, here we go. The official and original concept art of River. You see, just the redundancy of official and original. Like he just had to clarify for you. Didn't have any faith in you understanding that also means original concept art. Like, <laughs> All right, let's zoom in here. So this is for Avery Silman Isom. Isom was the first character that I created for Ripaverse Comics. I went in with the intention of creating someone that I had the utmost confidence in because this is a character that would be the primary focus when the company launched. The first thing I did was type out how I envisioned Isom as well as his background. This was a method I follow with most of the characters. But the unique thing about Isom was that I drew a sketch of his face and suit before I sent it to Marcos. I even colored the suit on a tablet. <laughs> what the fuck? This is a child. <laughs> I see, this, this, sounds like a, this sounds like a fifth grader, you know, writing something for his class. It, no, it sounds like someone a seven-year-old writing to santa like dear santa i want this and that and i want a pony with polka dots see i drew it so you knew what to get me like (laughs) (laughs) this is a 30 year old man (laughs) writing this he writes what he talks yeah he writes just like he talks (laughs) (laughs) oh my god you see why i love this universe like as much as he's a retard, and I can't wait for it to like tank. It's like he's getting my money because this is funny. Um, uh, like he really thinks he's Stan Lee or, or you know some great writer. It's like I'm really giving you the details here. Uh, the truth is, I wanted Marcus to have as many reference points as possible, even though my sketch was terrible. He did a fantastic job of bringing it to life. You don't see a lot of heroes with this color scheme. And that's a big reason as to why I went with it. As soon as, is there, I don't know. Is there any like orange characters that come to mind? I can't think of any right off hand. There's an orange Teletubby, I think. No, there's yellow, red, green, and purple. How do you know that? Well, it came out when I was like seven. Oh, yeah, and in hindsight, it's even funnier because they're just it's not to me. It's not creepy. It's just like it's it's a weird creation. Uh, it, like they have a TV in their belly, which is like, what is that for? Because like you're looking at it upside down. You know, right. It's, just, it's a funny, obs- not obscure, but just like uh, not not abstract. I, I can't think of a proper word to describe Teletubbies, but it's very. It, it's like as an adult watching it, it's like the Alice in Wonderland cartoon from Disney in the sixties. It was like a hit because of college kids because they were getting into drugs and stuff. So this was like uh, a, like kind of like in the drug culture imagery. So that's what boosted that movie more than the children seeing it. Yeah. Something in that realm is like the appeal of Teletubbies as an adult for me. <clears throat> Um, I can't yeah. think of an orange character. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
I guess you, ooh, I guess you got me there, Eric. <laughs> uh, What's up, Ancient Zero? Good to see you. See you. Yeah. Oh, my God. As soon as he sent back the concept art, it really set in stone our relationship because of how good it was. It was obvious that he gets that he gets it, and I hope I have him on our team for many years. I can't wait for Roll to read his origin story because I feel it's something very special. We haven't gotten his origin story, you idiot. <laughs> we have a rebirth maybe uh to arguably i guess but it doesn't that make doesn't any make sense. sense um let's see i feel it's very special uh i saw was the first character we worked on but not the first thing pertaining to riververse we created concept art for i first conceptualized the city of floor spark texas and other locations of interest such as i ranch which i also provided marcus a terrible sketch of again you could have just like found pictures on google it's, it's weird this insight he thinks he's giving all right here is the sister of i saw maltona support characters are arguably just as important to develop as the main ones creating i saw marked the creation of my universe bible <laughs> god damn he's such a genius <laughs> in which i document uh everything from con for continuity purposes came with a brief family tree and quick background for avery and his family this is when i figured that his sister altona would be introduced in the first book and have an important role she needed an interesting backstory of her own i tied her to the biotech company projects because that could create some interesting storylines going into the future in a world with super beings the people without powers are more challenging to create and you really must focus on their development no, I don't think it's hard to figure out normal people. Like, you're literally a normal person. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she works in a fucking office building. What the hell's so hard about that? There's literally a show called The Office to like give you ideas. Yeah, <laughs> it lasted nine. There's a great movie called Office Space. Yeah, let's. <laughs> 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 no, it's really hard to figure out superheroes with real people. And it's mm. like some semblance of reality, you know, that oh, because that Lois, that Lois and Clark Kent thing was so hard to do. It just was really hard to make those two work in, a, in the world where one's clearly the strongest being in the world, you know, hung up on some girl that's a news reporter. But they sold it really good forever. <laughs> but Eric is Eric's right. Re, Eric's rewriting fucking comic books, man. He's changing. He's he's moving it differently. <laughs> <laughs> like down the dumb train hole. Moving it to like fucking uh retarded kindergarten. Ugh. Um I modeled Altona slightly after my cousin, and then Marcus did the re uh, final concept art. One of the most important things to come from Altona's creation is her daughter Vassy. Uh, what a horrible name. Whatever Vassy is supposed to be, like stand for, it's just like uh, I can see it being a nickname, it's just like uh all right, here is Yaira. Woohoo! Ooh. Ooh. Now, I don't, I mean, it's silly that like this whole yoga clothes thing, but it's like, all right. Um, if you're just talking about something with her, it's like, I don't, I actually don't see the problem. I think it's a non issue what EVS was saying. I think he's maybe in detractor mode though. So what was he saying? Hey, he's saying like, the weights like she's a woman and i'm just like, oh oh she's super powered so uh the intention of ice on one was not just to introduce ice on his story but to also serve as a launching pad for an entire universe so we absolutely had to write a story that made sense so that we Still could wait another character <laughs> that would play final roles later <laughs> Yara was one of the few characters I had created before I wrote the actual story. This is due to the fact that I had great intentions for her, and she'll be a very prominent character of the Rupertverse. After documenting her backstory, I wrote the description of the character. <laughs> uh, it was almost as if I had to create two different looks because I wanted there to be visual changes to Yara when she goes from her rest stage to her powers being activated. So the first thing we worked on regarding the concept art was how she looked at rest. I wanted to give her, I wanted her to have familiar features while also being abnormal, even when she's not using her powers. Therefore, she's very tall. <laughs> 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 I 
that's abnormal. <laughs> it's just a tall chick. <laughs> She's tall. Oh, she must be super powered, clearly. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Oh, my God. This is silly. It's like the first love interest of Meth Gator is the girl. It's a different you know, styles based on the different uh, references I've given people. She's supposed to be mixed. So the bookmark I've shown before, that is what she's supposed to look like. But um, I've let people have fun, you know, creating her. Um, but uh, the idea is that Meth Gator is basically a recluse because he knows he's aware he's like a freak entity. Uh, he's like an open secret in this tiny swamp adjacent town called Whitmore, Georgia, outside Okefenokee Swamp in Georgia, uh, which is close to Florida, somewhere near Florida, as Eric would say. And it's like, well, I want to have like a bond element to my comics where every issue has a new sexy pinup variant. You know, it's like, well, how do I have this like freak obscure character get ladies? So the first issue I established that he likes to frequent the local hookers from the brothel in town. That's like his one real interaction with people, but it's transactional because he knows he's a freak. So he's not really like hunting for dates. It's like he understands his place in the world thus far. And so Shelby is a hooker. She's a young hooker. She's just kind of started out. So she's not like uh, well seasoned, so to speak, but you know, it's like, that's the thought I put in, but she's just a normal chick. She's just like babe on his arm that a relationship could develop, detract from her profession, you know, it's not hard. Like, it's just, you have a thought where it's like, all right, if he's a freak, is he like getting ladies all the time? If so, like someone's going to be talking at some point, like, oh, maybe she really get fucked by this guy, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, so like, I don't know. It's just funny reading Eric's line of thought versus I'm like, huh? All right. How does he get a girl? All right. Let's just do hooker. It's like classic Frank Miller thing. Um, this is funny. She's tall. (laughs) Marco sketched the art of her working out based on my description. This was used as the basis for first appearance in the book. At this time, it's created that she looked, we also created that she looked like when activating her power god he can't write uh i didn't want her to wear her suit in the main story but i knew it was important to design we handled her suit after we did the work for some of the other characters and marcus honestly led the charge on the design i gave him some basic ideas and he knocked it out of the park yeah i think she's got a good design what, what about y'all as does, superhero design for me as superhero designs go it's not bad but right uh it's if, if if this is going to be the same stuff that comes out of the Ripperverse, then I'm not I'm not expecting much. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. I think I think he, I think he nailed a, a fine design with the Ira. It's simple hair details, nice. I'm assuming that her blue comes when she's. Well, I don't know because he's showing the blue when she's working out. So I don't know if she's flying in her yoga suit like in the comic or yeah. Because you see, we're doing push ups, it's just blonde. So I'm assuming that's like her using her powers. But it's weird because in ISOM 2, if you've read it, when she crosses as Sally or whatever, crosses uh, Lincoln Eusebio, she's got blue in her hair. So it's like, does she have some sort of like manipulation power? Because that's what, like, p- piecing all this together, that's what I'm trying to take away. It's like, your buddy's in the chat, Black Angus. Oh, who? Ripperverse goal post. Goal post. We're coping and we're seething. <laughs> yeah, shout out. He shout out. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna catch up with the chat after this uh this first section from Tiso. So thank you, uh, supporters. Um, yeah, yeah, again, because the detractor cast taking my Tony, so I'm like, uh cope and seethe has been an idea in my head. I also thought about doing D and D, it'd be just dis- dissect and discard. Because that, that really stuck out to me. Eric said that about Dick's review that we're going to dissect and then discard uh, what you reviewed. Uh, let me catch up with the chat. Um, I guess beforehand, any comments from y'all uh, about what we read thus far? That's $75. <laughs> you want to own For seven pages. <laughs> I think 
I think someone did the math on the guy buying it on eBay for 300 was like 36 bucks a page. <laughs> uh, 300 bucks, you can get a really good cover. Um, I'll show you all that. I don't know if you've seen the, the bookmark I got done of Shelby. Have, you, have I showed y'all? I haven't, I haven't seen it, I don't think. All right, let me find it really quick. Uh, my pictures come on. It's waiting for it to pop up. There we go. Um, downloads, mess. Where'd we go? Investigator. That's not it. Um, gonna sort by. <laughs> Damn it. I'm trying to figure out how to I don't play with this enough. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Tell her, sure. <laughs> uh all right. Let me let me pull up this image. Here we go. Uh, oh, I gotta stop the screen. Present share window here we go so yeah this is the shelby bookmark so this is what she's posting like she's mixed <clears throat> wait what's going on here but yeah she's a mixed girl because i thought the history of georgia is uh, of course it was a slave state but it's also initially an en <clears throat> english indentured servant colony so a lot of basically white slaves paid off uh, whatever debts to england uh as indentured servants for I think usually it's like seven years. So I figured there's a good black white history to Georgia. So let me uh encapsulate that with the Shelby character uh visually making her mixed. Um and yeah got a really good artist she does a lot of uh just lewd uh erotic stuff and I'm like well make it lewd but like have her covered and so I thought the gator plushie was a nice touch. I mainly model this off of um that uh j scott piece of um mary jane with the coffee cup but yeah that'll be a bookmark when i have the comic nice yeah Ooh. uh all right let me catch with the chat yeah they shit on everything talking about the friday night tights zeros Serge just did back cg for not getting uh for for getting canceled c2e2 perhaps an attempt at a bridge perhaps self-service he's such a card <laughs> yeah i did see that and i'm like nice. so star just did what now he backed cg well i mean he's backed a lot of cg books through his history right. but also he um retweeted uh malin's tweet about getting canceled from c2e2 in support of cg creators so there's a there's a silver lining to Sturgis. There's a there's hope well, for him yet. <laughs> I mean, discrimination is discrimination. I don't care what side you're on. Nobody wants to be discriminated just because reasons, right? That's all it is. Right? Why not discrimination? Yeah. Bullshit. Because one day you could be discriminated discriminated against, and you don't even know why. You just I paid for the booth, man. I want I, I gave you money. Oh, you can't show up. Uh, we're discriminating against you for no reason. It's weird. And he should, he should, you know, he does have a, you know, a, a lot of books that he's backed and he, sh he did the right thing. You got to give him credit for that one. Oh, funny. I'm trying to close old tabs to not hinder my stream on my side. Uh, and it's funny because uh, me and Ricky were like riffing. He's talking about, he's like, oh, do you ever like plan to do like some side stuff? He's, again, he's really like, the whole reason I was talking about Breaking Bad and my experience with Ricky is this is like opened up. He's really appreciating all the like montage sequences in that show, um, going in detail with obscure facts of the show <clears throat> that other shows wouldn't think to do. And so he's like, oh, you thought about doing like, you know, some side stuff with, uh, you know, random characters, like where the tweakers are that first, you know, caused the meth gator incident. And I'm like, no, they're fucking tweakers. They're poaching eggs for money. There's nothing there. I'm not interested in actually developing them beyond that. They're just a plot device. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not going to give them some crazy Breaking Bad backstory of like how they're in with the anything. No, they're just tweakers. Um 
but he was talking about Ramry Island. I've never heard of this. So there is this uh, supposed mass crocodilian mauling in World War II Burma. And then I've read, I found the article because he brought it up. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm looking at it. And it's like, yeah, actually, uh, lots of scientists, historians have reviewed this. They've interviewed people that were alive at this point and stories. And it's like, this was fake. <laughs> so this thing you got really excited about me modeling off of is not real. I'm like, uh, yeah, wouldn't be interesting. The Burma thing? Or the yeah. British the British on the island? Yeah. So supposedly there's this like fiction that I heard there, it. I, there was a I've mass on History Channel, dude. It. It's got to be real. It's not real. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I found an article that dis disproves it. That like there's been extensive research for decades now and debunking it. Because <laughs> it's mm. a very interesting story. Like wow, uh, mass cow of Japanese to crocodiles. You know, because there's that what emu war in Australia. So it's like such an outlandish story. You, you it's got to be true. And it's like no, it's not. Hmm. Um, let's see, stop sharing. Uh, see, sketch says, I wish that were true, but Doomcock wasn't profitable. EJ is so FNT will drop Ryan Tinhead Canal before they drop Eric. Well, yeah, Eric does have the uh, the black card in his favor to, I would say, extend uh, his warranty. Uh, but again, it only lasts so long, and they already they're, they're cool with that Clifton guy, so they got other black people you can swap out. Um, Let's see, uh, love now. If Sugar says, uh, they're not his friends, they're all just trying to use them for something exactly. Low watermark says, if EFAP ISOM, I'd watch that. Talking to you, nerd, <laughs> <laughs> I should, uh, I should probably put something together. Andrew Rowland says, Goku wears orange. Ah, okay, Goku, if that's anime. It's like it's not even my field of thought thinking about comics, you know. Um, let me let me look this up comic characters that shit that where isn't the thing kind of an orange shade yeah he is book? that's his body though it's not like yeah. you know it's, okay larf larf fleas from green lantern which i think evs created um there's like Ch tigra but she's not that well known starfire i guess technically is orange but uh i mean it doesn't like <clears throat> yeah even looking at this list of like these are orange characters in comics and it's like uh most Did of are... show up <laughs> 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 it should be number one right is i <laughs> on that list um no not i don't know how old this is but i'm seeing lots of weird green lantern people but some of these are like aliens so it's like their skin is orange not like the suit i'm not really seeing any orange suited people and the thing is, like, less well, his body. So, I mean, like, yeah, you're going to cosplay an orange rock man, but it's not really. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that, though, because, like, I was looking at lists. <clears throat> Last week we were talking about, uh, what? What was that? Something to the Yara or something. Oh, it's because the black they wrote Black Widow, those uh, Sasuke sisters. And so mm -hmm. I started looking in. <clears throat> There's these lists you can find to Google best Black Widow comics. You know, screen rant and all these other sites <clears throat> they have articles for when the black widow film was coming out they're trying to hype up some of the comics like hey if interesting black widow here's the best stories one of them had like 20 stories and they were covering stuff from like the 60s on no restraints play never came up which you think they'd really push because oh two women two woke trans right children activists wrote black widow never comes up in any of the lists i looked up no one fucking cares about that story. So when you say this is the black best Black Widow story ever, doubt, really doubt it. And they included Avengers run, so it wasn't just Black Widow solo, which again she doesn't have like in depth runs. So, mm. uh, yeah. Any of these Rupertars try to hype up like all oh, the Saskas are going to be good. Of course, they wrote the best. Thing. They just copy Eric because Eric says, "Oh, it's the best thing," because he's clearly not read anything of depth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, it sounds like a guy that's been fed nothing but blind support his whole life. Now the rest of the world is seeing that he has a mentality of an eighth grader. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, could have that on uniforms. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Venna. Uh, orange ring from the Green Lantern is orange. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Larflees and his crew. Agent Zero says hello. Well, thank you. 
Uh, Ethan thinks I saw him as perhaps based on Luke Cage. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, another one. E. Rollins again saying Goku. Tim Stock saying, oh no, BTM, hail. So you went 10 hours last night. And thanks for joining us, Tim. Uh, we got Andrew saying, Goku wears orange. <laughs> Oh, hey, you're you're that uh, Vic Mignona voiceover. Uh, XP comic. Comics, yeah. Yeah, I got to watch that soon. Um, I did. Uh, okay. Um, said that this is a better artist than the ISOM penciled. Uh, that punching bag one is far more dynamic than the book. Now, that is an interesting uh, angle. Um takes a particular level of skill and talent to create such bland and generic characters. Again, this is what's so interesting about the Riververse to me is it's just levels unfound. It's like that episode of South Park where James Cameron gets in his submarine. He's like, we got to see who set the bar so low. He's like, Randy Newman. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. I don't know if you like the Toy Story soundtrack by Randy Newman. You know, you got a friend. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great song. But it's it's definitely like stands out because like I don't know anyone that sings like this or plays music like this blend, and then you look into his discography, and it's like this is horrible. What the what? How did he ever land? Well, I mean, he's got a name Newman, so you know that might be the angle, might be his in. Figure yeah, that had, one out if you if you will, chat. He's left <laughs> off. He's left off. I think one song that they play in every fucking basketball stadium for the last. 30 years i think i think he that's his claim to fame he's got one song i think Wait, that's what, what is that i don't remember the name of it uh, let me look it up go ahead uh <laughs> groove jim <laughs> saying thank you to andrew and says now i can't get i saw naruto running out of my head <laughs> and yeah he says uh, for another two thank you so does naruto um Speaking about wearing orange again, I'm not a big anime guy, so you can say I'm like, oh yeah, I guess so, but that's not in the field of thought. But yeah, I guess you got me. Eric is changing live, says low watermark. He is, <laughs> he is. Um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna be having some workers in the unemployment line sooner or later. Um, I mean, he's already on streams. He's like, hey, we are hiring at the Riververse. We're hiring for the warehouse. It's like. The same guy, it's like, oh, uh, everyone props up is like, he's a millionaire, he's winning, you know? And he's like trying to advertise, like, hey, if you're in Dallas, you can come work for me at my warehouse. It's not winning. Like, no one's applying, apparently. <laughs> Maybe it's not Randy Newman, but I know they played that fucking song, I Love LA Forever. Oh my I God. Love LA. I don't know. Oh, that remember that? Mm -mm. Never I Love LA. Ugh. Man, it, it's very, it's very yacht rock stuff. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Venice says if she lifts weights, make them massive. Right. Uh, that, was e that, was, that was Ethan's thing, I think. Like, they're little eight-pound weights, and she's supposed to be a superhero. Why would she even look at an eight-pound barbell? What are those bumps? Let me, let me look. Let me look really quick what the bumps were. Um, I'm looking at the picture. Oh! Okay, that's weird. She's got weird bumps on her boots. There's some weird detail from what I gather. Yeah, because he does, he has them consistently in all these pictures of her boots. So I couldn't tell you. I, I guess that's supposed it's to be her just flare. Some sort of, it's her flair. Yeah, that's my guess. Although in the card uh, that, um, uh, who is the suit yourself? I think suit yourself shared the Yaira card the backside mm -hmm. of it you can read the description of dokumon <laughs> it's like seems she has like ice come from her pores <laughs> and just, so when he said bumps around i'm like is that, the, is that supposed to be the ice pour power <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sounds like a, a disease the way that he describes that it's like ice is coming from her pores like um like acne or you know oils or something um yeah she's lifting eight pounders <laughs> shout out says uh rupert gold post thank you only 75 bucks guys uh for you 75 for me 300 so you must be rolling pretty good to just blow 300 to read dog shit ripperverse products 
on the secondary market. Um, I wish I had 600 bucks to have the ISOM hat. That was the one list thing I found when I bought my detractor hat, my ISOM bros Angus hat. Uh, yeah, like again, this is not a typical hat I wear. It's not like a good color scheme, if you haven't noticed. But yeah, finding that, looking up ISOM, man, I'm like, how can I not buy? This is the perfect fusion <laughs> of, uh, you know, reverse <laughs> and, and me. It's the perfect hat. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Eric has helped me fund an obscure ranch out of, uh, I think it's defunct now out of like Indiana. <laughs> uh, you tell Yara is the only character that Eric, uh, and Marcos first actually cared about during the concept phase. Everyone else is completely generic. <laughs> uh, it's a shame we're canceled. Oh yeah. We're going to be getting into that. Uh, but there's just so much here with this, uh, art book. Here we go. We'll pull it back up. Get to the next phase. Um, all right. So I haven't read any of this. So now we got Sam. Wi might be Willard, but it's spelled Williard. Uh, Sillman Ranch. Samford. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, my God. All right. His so fucking it's, name creations are terrible. Yeah, they are. It's, yeah, oh. this is, it's unfortunately, this goes in line with that whole. If you got a weird black name, they, you know, there's this, there's this narrative. I don't know if it's true or not. There's this narrative like, well, you, there's discrimination in the workplace. Like, even if you turn in a blank resume, if you got a weird black name, they probably will toss it out. I don't know if that's actually true. If you're actually looking for work, and you're like, all right, weird name. What's the qualifications? Like, but again, it's definitely like aesthetically off pleasing, uh, off putting to see these. Uh, weird sometimes it's a normal name they write they, they'll write it dumbest way possible um so i'm assuming it's to that um so sam i wanted to create a character that was connected to isom but wasn't exactly family since we built isom to have his own ranch i figure why not have some sort of lead ranch hand play a significant role <laughs> <laughs> all right you have to think in eric terms all right this sounds like okay yeah it makes total sense and it's like wait 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 eric thinks this is groundbreaking th stuff here like in the yara car he's like she's got two degrees that's two lifetimes of experience he doesn't realize that like you get a degree you've knocked out all your prerequisites. You can do all the major courses. That's probably like a semester or two, maybe three to like knock out a second degree. <laughs> Cause you just got to get the majors out of the way. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about like maybe 36 hours. So, uh, yeah, between 36 and 60 hours. So you're talking about like maybe another two years for an average student to knock out. If they're full time. Yeah, sure. If you're full time doing like you know 12 to 15 hours a semester, that's yeah, a couple of years. Oh my okay. God. July, you know, it must take two lifetimes to do something like that. <laughs> He's really not helping the perception of black people. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this is why I love this because it's just like, oh my god. Um because the ranch is important to ISOM, <laughs> me and Ricky gotten multiple fights about this because I'm my whole Eric has it, it kind of through all this made me realize a like key thing that no one ever talks about, but it's like a character's job. You have you have to state their job. And if you don't, like that really sets them in place. It can be as obscure as Jon Snow is a low lord within House Stark because he's a bastard. So he'll only, at best, he'll only get like a small fiefdom within the Winterfell, you know, territory. But not knowing what exactly a lord is, it's like, all right, here, he's already like the upper echelon, even as a bastard. That's his job, you know, uh, uh, um, abstractly. Luke Skywalker. It's part of a moisture farming family. Uh, Harry Potter is a child who goes to school. And then when he's out of school, he's locked into a closet. Like that's his job. He's closet boy. And then you find out actually your parents 
or wizards. You have a, a, a heritage by blood, you know, you're special. Mm-hmm. You actually took out Voldemort when you're a baby, <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah, it could be, it could be, you got to define it. And so in the pitch of the ISOM campaign, he's like, he's a rancher. And I, my whole point was like, besides like seeing a ranch, the ranch doesn't fucking matter at all for ISOM. It matters for his new hiree that Sam hires. So it matters for Sam because that's his job, but you have no understanding of, all right, ISOM has a ranch. Is he just like scraping by? Is this major purchase that being a superhero gave him money? So what was the extent of being a superhero? Was it like the boys where a company covers you or was it vigilantism? And thus you're not making money, uh, at least legally, you know, uh, there's all these factors where I'm like, Eric gave me this detail and then it doesn't fucking matter for him. It matters for side people like Sam and a new hire. And it, it could have been a great route for, I saw him to talk to the new hire and be like, yeah, you know, it stuff sucks, but you know, it really builds character and you know, you have a better outlook on life than the stupid city folk that don't know where their food comes from, etc. And he could add some sort of libertarian, you know, speaking through the character moment, get the, the perception of ice on why he hates the city. Yeah. You don't get any he, of it. He owns his own land for this reason. He's going to be self-sufficient, all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah all you get is, Oh, well he works out at an outdoor gym. <laughs> on a ranch which is weird as fuck because like I can't there's old cameras with that but yeah it's like Eric has made me realize how important it is to establish a job whether it's like even if it's like homeless it's like well that tells me about the guy's job and so that informs me the rest of the plot of all right, if he's homeless, he has no cash flow. So he's he super is, down on his luck, right? This dude is at the bottom of the barrel right now. Uh, he definitely shouldn't be at like Caesar's Palace in uh, Vegas unless he's looking for a job as a janitor. Like, you know, you can start escalating him, but like you have to establish a character's job to understand his role in the world, however mm-hmm. obscure or direct it is. And thanks to this book, Eric has like added this little feature that like was kind of a no brainer. But he's made me analyze it in a way I never would before. Because even bad writers will like at least give you clarity about a, that kind of detail. And Sanford or uh, Sanford, uh, my Sanford. Sanford <laughs> <laughs> brings up a good point. Uh, he says uh, Sanford really both his first and last name end in the same erd sound. Sanford <laughs> Willard. Like what the fuck. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe that was intentional. Like maybe Eric wanted to have some sort of like back end alliteration. Like it was just funny for him. Sure, I, I'm fine with that. You know, it's like the whole like Peter Parker, Stephen Strange, the alliteration that Sam Stanley would do a lot of. That now is like a joke. Um, might have just been fun for Eric. You know, I'm fine with that if that's the angle. But yeah, that is something to point out. Like he's like. Fuck, I never realized that, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, because the ranch is important to ISOM, never see it two issues thus far. Uh, the person that helps run it will therefore be very important. <laughs> the insight from Eric. I've already built his backstory, and I can't wait to expose much of it to the audience. There will be plenty of avenues to take his story. I sent the description I have on to Marcus, and he, as usual, did a great job of the descript- of the depiction. You uh, you skipped a sentence. I did. Yeah, it says he acts right up there. He acts as someone. Keep going up. Right after very important. He acts as someone that's able to hold down the fort when Isom's doing his thing. <laughs> no, he, he, he acts like the guy, but he's not the guy. He acts like the guy, <laughs> but he doesn't hold down the fort. He just acts like he holds down the fort. What the fuck, dude? That's, that's as soon as like, as soon as Isom goes away, he's, he's on a smoke break. He's like someone else yeah. take care of that. All right. So like the face, the body, the proportions look all right, but it looks so fucking still. And again, I get it's like concept, but it's like he's the fucking character from Duluth trading company. Uh, this looks, and he then looks like, like the these side the profiles, trading. 
the fact that Eric sold this for 75 bucks, like J. Scott Campbell, his like little notebooks, he's got like, I think like at least five of them. Uh, they're small. I think they're maybe like 20 pages, like sketchbooks. And it's just random, like a whole page should be filled with like random doodles. But like <sighs> Eric really banked on this Marcos guy. And it's like, I guess he's improving, but fuck, look at this. Like, this looks like a Egyptian hieroglyph, you know, like the, the way he's drawing this is so flat. Hmm. Look at this head. Yeah. Oh my God. I do like seeing this little, these little bubbles, these little color bubbles. Like this is, is a color, color range. Like I, 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 don't know, I like that. The palette thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here is uh Santuan. <laughs> That's his only name. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking. this. This guy, this, this guy's some personality. I like it. It's not bad. I guess this is what really takes me away is like there's some consistency to Marcus's art here, but it's all uh most of it's like flat or stale or you know, but this has like some range to it. It's got some you feel the motion looking at it. All right, Santuan. After most of the people connected to Isom were conceptualized, I thought to develop his adversaries. I knew before I wrote the story that I wanted the first book to showcase some of his powers. This meant that there would be physical confrontation, and that's when I began to create Santuan. He's a character that was meant to be much bigger and display more raw strength than Isom. But alluding to the existence of a previous altercation was something I did as I was writing the book. Both characters have having a brief history made their altercation more meaningful. Wait, what? That isn't. Hmm. When I read Isom, it feels like that's their first time meeting him and Santuan kicking his ass. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think of that? Yeah, when I read it, I I didn't it didn't feel like they knew each other at all. Exactly. So this is like, wait, he's. Yeah. Better go edit that Bible. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it a Bible if you got to edit it, you idiot. You know, it's like the idea of the Bible is that it's like concrete. And, and you already have a lore established, but now you got two people managing your lore for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, both characters having a brief alt a brief issue made their altercation more meaningful and gets the audience thinking the description I had for him was something intimidating. And I really emphasized the gold teeth for Marcus. Wait until you learn the, learn all, uh, fuck. wait until you all learn of his past. Oh, oh I, can't I was just wait, dude. Can't wait. I was just thinking, I can't wait for a Samford Willard comic. <laughs> <laughs> and a San Juan comic. Oh boy. Now Santon could be interesting because it seems like he's a, a mercenary, which I think is where he got the Merc idea for the which is weird to name the club Club Merc. It's like, wait, it's Club Mercenary? That doesn't make sense. That always bothered me. All right, we've got Sergeant Mick Davies. <laughs> What's his first name? <laughs> Seventy-five dollars to gain all this knowledge, guys. All the years. Again, this book serves as a launching pad for our universe. <laughs> we have to get creative. Because although this may be the first book, there are obviously events that happen in this universe prior to book one being introduced. Yara already has a history in the city of Floor Spark, which means that she would have had a run in with law with its law enforcement. This is where Sergeant Mick Davies comes into play. <laughs> I wanted I like this because it's such a childish like I'm gonna make an Irish character name. <laughs> uh that's where Sergeant McDavis comes into play. I wanted a seasoned leader in the police force that would be utilized for years to come in this universe. When I created him, his appearance was simply that of what I envisioned as a believable police sergeant. Riveting. <laughs> you could have said, I needed a, a cop. 
Mm -hmm. It's funny having like been detracting and paying attention to like his word salad. And it's just like literally could have said Yara's running with the cops because she's a bad guy. And so here's one of the cops. He's a cop. Uh, <laughs> Liana Renashi. Here's another thing. Uh, Ingrid Valdez. So before I joined the army, I was really into this like small run series of uh, a magazine called Bound, Bound by Ink. I'm not sure how many issues I ever had, but I was buying them because I'm just like, a young guy before joining the army, I wanted tattoos. And there's all these like hot babes on the cover. Cause I'm been like 10 bucks. I actually read all the articles and stuff. And there's this one chick that was like half Israeli, half, I think Guatemalan. It's a very weird ethnic mix. And so the more you learn about history stuff where it's like, sometimes it's like, Oh yeah. Afghans having such a weird color palette to like their hair and skin. Given the history of Afghanistan, it makes total sense. They'd have such a huge range um, of like phenotypes. Uh, but something like uh, Ingrid Valdez, or it's like Germanic Mexican. It's not that a Mexican couldn't be named Ingrid, but it's just like, I don't think that'd be like a common choice. And it just stands out where it's like, clearly Eric's just throwing dumb shit together. And then like Renashi, it's like, sounds Japanese. Is she supposed to be Asian? Sure. That doesn't strike me as Asian. I don't know. Looking at this art, I'm thinking maybe she's Asian now. So it actually just, but like in the comic, Alpha Core. Oh, that's another thing. Um, in Alpha Core, does he, does, does, uh, you get the black cop that's got a problem with Solari. And then you get the chief, I guess. Does he ever say the name? It's like chief isn't a sergeant, but it's just like, wait, why wouldn't Sergeant McDavies pop in for like a, a, a cameo, you know, an established kind of like, wait, is that Sergeant McDavies? <gasps> you know, like I was just thinking about that. I don't know. It's just his naming pattern is weird and it doesn't feel like it's in the same universe of Alpha Core. <clears throat> Um, do, do we get an art page of the fucking villain or supposed villain? Oh, of Dokumon? I think so. I think I scrolled and saw it. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, he, he does Dokumon. So I guess this is supposed to be his Thanos. I haven't read it yet. So um, we will see. Let me go back where. Here we are. Liana Renashi. I've had many character ideas on it, but legitimizing their existence is the most important thing. I don't want any character that I emphasize to just exist for the sake of existing. What is the point of saying that? <laughs> so as I fleshed out, like this is a concept book of like, these are key characters in my universe. So I'm already reading this on the assumption that they aren't just, background random people you know so as i fleshed out lilia liliana or Lil lillian i was thinking of how i could introduce her this is when i came up with the idea of having her be part of a duo with another character but i didn't want her to just be another character that was from the city of floor spark it's a great city that will obviously attract outsiders like lillian and michael copper Coming up with their powers was the easiest part of it. Um, the light. I can't quite read all that. Um, something as well as overall design. Marcus really took the lead, however, on fleshing around my original ideas and took it to the next level. For example, her glowing hair perhaps was something that Marcus added. Or, or hair tips was something she added. I thought it said perhaps. I'm like, fucking more vagaries. Hmm. Okay. Any thoughts on what we've read? I'm dumber. That's my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Let me catch up on this. 
it's like Animal House, right? Everything you said is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I'm stupider for being here listening to this whole thing. It, it, oh, my God. It's so bad. Yeah. Geek Bros says $75 for this. <laughs> oh, who drew that? Uh, I'll DM you, Sketchbook. Or D- DM me so I'll remember. I'll, I'll send you the links. Um, I'm sure you can get a commission. Not very expensive. That was... It was funny because I saw her commission price and I'm like, fuck, I got to take take this. And I'm like, well, I want it commercial. And so she charged like 50% on top of her normal fee. But that was a sketch commission. I think it's the she. I don't actually know. It's not clear on the account, but I'm assuming it's a girl drawing this. Um, Reasonable price for sure. And yeah, that was a sketch piece. It wasn't like her like full bore attention art so i'm just like wait this is a sketch commission this that's crazy <laughs> um sturgis needs to be flipped like making on an asset for the cia he actually likes comics uh if that fake burma story fits your narrative you can use anyway oh yeah just make it seem like they were wrong about disproving it like t- titan verse with hollow earth um yeah, it's just like Ricky brought it up, and I'm like, I'm already not interested. Like, I don't see an angle for me with what I want to write. <laughs> so I was already like dismissive, and then I read, I'm like, oh, well, like, I'm definitely not going to pull from a fake story. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Aquaman has an orange. Thank you. Okay, finally. Yeah, and again, Aquaman is a joke character, like his perception. You know, especially in the super friends, like, oh, look, Aquaman, he's going to talk to fish. Ha ha ha. Like, he's always been a joke character. Uh, even with Jeff Johns trying to like beef him up, it's just like, no one fucking cares about Aquaman. If Aquaman could harness water, like, you know, Magneto pulls the iron from the guy in X Men 2. If he did some shit like that with water, think how fucking scary Aquaman be. If he's actually a water man, if he's like Poseidon or something, that'd be cool. Um, that's why Braxville is called Jeremiah instead of Jeremiah. It's so African that it can't fail. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. Uh, he's doing this weird black shit. Compl- uh, uh, needlessly complicating uh, name writing to... I don't know. I don't know why they do that. By the way, like the Ison thing, but Deathstroke has the same color palette as Ison, black and orange. He no longer wears the old school blue and orange. Hmm. Eric is the ex- worst example of an African American. Says Yolanda Gaines, huh. Samford, really both his first and last name. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and he's white. Is that some kind of race swap? Harry Potter's just stars with sucky lightsabers. Um, I didn't grow up with Harry Potter. It was not allowed. It's the devil. So I didn't watch it till more recently, and I really liked the first three movies, and then the hell's going up and then uh i think four and on it just gets that ugly color palette which is weird i don't know why they did that this weird desaturated color scheme for harry potter like harry potter is appealing it's an all ages story but definitely for kids and you want to do that aesthetically where it's like all right the dreary everyday muggle world and it's like i go to hogwarts in the wizarding world it's beautiful you know you want that like distinction you don't want it even if you're going with the whole darkness in, impending lord of the rings is beautiful almost the whole way till they get to mordor you know when they go to like mordor it's very clearly like bleh. it's black and gray and ugly everywhere else is beautiful even if it's fading even with like the elves in their twilight it's fall it's still colorful hmm. i don't know but yeah I, I do like harry potter I, I definitely get the appeal i would have loved it as a child if i could have enjoyed it but um it's all right now that i'm older seeing it like eh, i can take it or leave it but uh, the answer is just the idea from kingdom come which superman went and isolated himself from society uh was so lame and obvious oh okay i haven't read kingdom come i know about it but i haven't read it uh why is there superhero police force as well as vigilante superheroes are vigilante superheroes even allowed to exist yeah that's definitely something i'm interested like what eric's explanation will be (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, uh, Y'all can chime in anytime with uh, add your commentary with uh, the comments. Yeah, it'd be like, uh, well, you know, it, 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 what it is is as um, <laughs> with, with with the heroes, it, it, it is it is what it is with them. Do I draw you a picture? I'm assuming the Alpha Core is like a new creation that's post Isom and whoever else was a superhero or villain. Um, it's just really weird that like Eric's done nothing to build any outside world outside of floor spark thus far. And then it's like, I saw supposed to be the grounded character, but then it's like, well, actually we got to go even more grounded or and do Horseman, <laughs> <laughs> which is like, but you already have good who's supposed to be just a guy with money. So yeah, if, 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 if he wants to build a, a world, then he should, you know, okay, there's Floor Spark. But talk about the, the world outside Floor Spark. Don't keep hiding everything. I know he wants to keep, play everything close to the vest. I know he doesn't want to give things away. I don't know if because he thinks people are going to afraid to I'm not going to hold your hand, ideas. nerd. But, <laughs> but I mean, th th this whole secession thing. Why? How? What? I mean, give us a little more lore going on. Just, you know... It, it just feels so isolated. And yeah, but it's happened, it started two weeks ago somewhere in Texas. <laughs> well, that was a quick ass war then. Oh my God, it's so weird. Well, what's weird is uh, from what I gather, uh, Solari was not born this way. Like, so I'm, I'm expecting this to be, uh, at least with him, that it's like some sort of Vought, like the boys plot. That's an injection, at least for some people. Yeah, that's what I was under the impression. I thought he was kind of like his version of Captain America. Yeah. And I just, I'm excited to see how bad the explanations will be. But it seems like he's, I think he's going to get stuck creatively with the downward spiral that is his universe with the money from mm -hmm. dwindling customers um i think how do i say this uh oh invincible i was watching an interview of robert kirkman <clears throat> and uh you know his comic was fine whatever but it was like really starting to dwindle in sales and like hey we need like a fucking banger now he, there's no like issue 24 or whatever. So he had to like redo his like lineup of story to like juice it up quick. And so given Eric keeps invoking manga and like one piece has got like a thousand issues. He really thinks he can just like, he really thinks he's mimicking like the layering that manga does. <laughs> and also I think he's really trying to stretch it out, which is like, this is the problem with comics. Comics are, you know, a monthly, bi monthly, whatever. Uh, they're a hit. You know, it's like it's a fix every month for collectors. Like, I gotta get the next issue. You know, it's really a numbers game. It's not, a, it's not the format, it does not necessitate quality, it preys upon collectors. All right. My whole thing with comics getting indie is like, we can't try to mimic the monthly or bi-weekly that's why we're here where we're at with shitty writers <laughs> you have to go opposite and do like Doug to Naple where you make like a pristine format if you can afford it and also the story is a like a bigger page count and it's way more of a bang for your buck intermittently maybe quarterly at best like uh, Lady Death which Lady Death's not like good storytelling. It's adequate, but it's you know, like, you know, it has the sex appeal at selling like half the issues. <laughs> and Eric's like, don't loot my characters. It's like, why are you kneecapping yourself? Well, you're like, you'd have so much, much more fandom if you had random artists drawing like Yaira titties and Blood Ruth and lesbian <laughs> shit and stuff. Her getting fucking blacked by like a, a Santuan and Isom. There's a whole market. There's all these porn. Like I found that fucking porn artist that did the uh, the Shelby piece, and I was like, "Well, you know, keep it tame to some degree." Um, but people seem like, "Fuck, that looks good." And it's like, yeah, and I'm not against people doing fucking weird furry porn of uh, 
meth gator and whatever <laughs> like go for it that just people are like who wait is that someone's character they might tag me in their post that gets hundreds of views and retweets you know like it only helps you expose yourself more by letting people you don't even agree with their art form like well it's secondary advertising i mean george lucas was a big enough man to let the whole eu thing get created right the extended yeah. universe he's like go for it have a good time make some new stories yeah, and like uh, the comics, he Ayla Sakura, the blue Twi'lek from uh, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, she was EU Comics. Darth Talon, he was actually going to make her the apprentice of Darth Maul in his episode 9. Uh, she's from post-Luke uh, comics. Hmm. So yeah, like Lucas wasn't opposed to like pulling from people playing with his creation. Um I get like <clears throat> keeping it contained and it's like as much as you can kind of like hate Lucas for not giving us more over the years. You see the quality of the whole 40 years he was there at Lucasfilm because it like you had the comics and the books to like extend, but it was like, you know, your prime film stuff was like very select and far and few between. It kept people wanting and thinking and speculating. It made it an event. That's another thing Eric's going to ruin himself with. It's like he's going to kneecap himself with now he's trying to rush out stuff. But yeah, I think he's going to get stuck with like, all right, uh, I saw him nine. That's when I'll reveal his origin. And it's like, no, you got to do that like today. <laughs> he's not going, going to know what to do. And he's going to have to like lay all the cards on the table. And people are like, finally, finally, the Riptars are going to be like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if I if I some three doesn't give some kind of background to to who he is, why he is, I I think most of his fans are, are probably just going to say, "All right, if you're just going to hold out, I'm just I'm not even going to bother anymore." <laughs> Does Iceland have a ranch or just an Olympic training facility? No, he's got a ranch. He's got workers. He's got apparently cows or livestock need tending to, but doesn't matter for him directly. Which is like again, is he doing better or worse than when he was a superhero? That's that's the detail you include to understand his state in the world. Cause then it's like if he's just walking off the farm and going to the city and investigating uh Jasmine, is this hurting his bottom dollar by taking away from his business? Like, you know, he's he's probably one coordinating like supplies and whatnot for his ranch selling of cows or buying of cows or horses whatever he's ranching it's just a lot there even like a mom and pop like 100 acre farm like it's a lot of work <laughs> uh, a lot of logistics you got to manage and it's mind block that sentence uh, i don't know if i did uh duluth trading <laughs> san tuan <laughs> way to perpetuate naming stereotypes of black people exactly I've been saying now I can't let it go. It makes no sense. I need it to make sense. Yeah, I definitely want this shit to make sense. But then it's fun when it doesn't. Santuan sounds like a name that Michael Keyes created the ghetto substitute teacher would say. <laughs> <laughs> Santuan, you mean Saint Juan? Oh my god, that's probably where he got it from. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Because apparently Floor Spark is like Flores Park. I think is a place in Texas. Guys, he could have made it fucking Dallas, dude. <laughs> he could have made it Dallas and put like stuff people know in Dallas in his book. Not hard. <clears throat> yeah, but if he didn't make a fake city, then you might figure something out quick. You might get accused of using 3D assets. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mick Davies sounds like a burger joint. That's funny. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, I have ideas for after issue one, what I want to do with Meth Gator, but um, I'm thinking about making an Eric stand in, an Eric insert character that's for detractors to enjoy that will get in like Meth Gator's crew at some point. I'm still like trying to flesh it out, but I'm thinking I'm having like some sort of like failed dropout of like, 
you know, maybe he's in the Marines or tried to be in the Marines or military of some kind or some sort of like cool guy SWAT squad kicking indoors in some manner. And he like dropped out, failed or some shit because he's like a crackpot. He has his use as a weapons guy, but you know, it's like he clearly couldn't work in conventional. And so I'm thinking about having him uh, have like in his head a character that's like a luchador enemy called uh disrespecto who's always like taunting him and this is the under this is like what no one else sees but him that is the underpinning of all of his failings and and getting kicked out or it's like uh oh, you see they disrespected you <laughs> and he's like that cannot be tolerated and <laughs> he's always getting into trouble <laughs> see you already like it <laughs> 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 uh what does even mean by that white guy mustache brilliant <laughs> that's how all cops are to me <laughs> making sense costs extra super t so no i paid that price already it needs to make sense now <laughs> to be fair lillian here is the best design character in the book marcus must have actually gave a crap that day no i think antoine's fine uh yeah is fine her and Valdez. Oh my god, Valdez is fucking horrible. It's a fucking ugly, boring Mexican German Wonder Woman with like goo tentacle uh whips. Nice. Germanic Tex Mexican is Norm in South Texas, huge German. Yeah, yeah, I know about like New Braunfels. I've been down there, I've been to San Antonio. I'm aware of like the German pockets of Texas. Assuming it goes back to like colonizing Texas, uh, you know, kind of happened like in World War Two. Oh well, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just joking. No, I was, you know, I was about to say like the 1800s, like you know, more and more immig immigrants are coming from Europe. So I could see there, like uh, in Oklahoma, there's like this random Italian pocket because uh, there's like a mining town mm. close to where I'm from. And so, oddly, yeah, there's like this. And I guess there was like a pocket of Russians there, too, because there was a Russian Orthodox church based on the mining community at the time. Uh, according to Dogamon, she's from Japan, but he's unaware of where in Japan. You know, overseeing entity can't been pinned down whether she's from Tokyo or elsewhere. <laughs> he's their watcher. Uh, Dogamon mm -hmm. seems to be confused as much as Eric. <laughs> Uh, she has the ability to observe without being noticed, and he can't be bothered to actually know anything about the subjects he's watching. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Uh, how can I get a copy of this scan of this book? Uh, hit up uh, his handle is at Super Tiso on Twitter. Um, I'm going to break down each page of the Dokumon art book after I demolish the Dokumon cards. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to see the rest of those. Um, no, it doesn't make sense either. So they had this great war that was some decades ago. Solari was the hero of it. So for decades, they had no way to police the other excepts. <sighs> yeah. My fake lore is that Yaira is trans and that the rest of America became anti-trans. And so she's like a, Texas became a trans safe haven. And that's what started the civil war. That's my lore. Have y'all made any fake lore for Ripperverse? I uh, no. I no. I haven't even no. no. Oh, come <laughs> on. Dude, <laughs> the lore is already so bad. I mean I'm, I'm busy working on my own stuff. I don't got time to deal with him. <laughs> I saw him for two reveals the wars long ago. Gooding and Avery were kids during it. Hmm. Okay, so I didn't realize that. Um Sigma Saturian, thanks for joining us. Promises number one delivers number promises number ones delivers number twos. Papa Cotton's in the house. What's up, man? Just attracting. Uh, I'll do a better scan of it eventually at Staples. Apparently, Mint Sal and Riley will upload it to read comics or whatever. <laughs> 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 if Texas is separate from the US, how are people traveling to and outside of it? How does commerce work how does travel work who is the government there dude these are things i was saying i'm like this is so retarded um like i'm from oklahoma originally so we're a flyover state besides if you're into football with the sooners or nba with the thunder 
Uh, or if you're into like Native American history, that's about the only attractions for the outside populace to come to Oklahoma for. You know, because we have the Troll of Tears, we got the Indian Nations, oh, and casinos. And um, so those are like the draws. If you make it all of a sudden international borders, Oklahoma would be booming. We already got a military base at Fort Sill. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have the base tinker air force base i'm not sure if it's still there in oklahoma city or not but yeah those would get boosted really quick those would become fort hoods also fort hood is in texas also uh all the u.s military medical training is in san antonio at fort sam houston so that'd be a huge fucking problem for the military (laughs) (laughs) of the federal government and so Eric writing the silly cessation fantasy and there's no explanation is oh my gosh, just even more confusing. Yeah, there's no like this is what happened after a secession. Just it happened. We're seceded. seceded and California, in- California and Texas are allies in the secession. Is that what the story is? Wait, no, I thought that was in the Civil War movie coming out. Yeah. Yeah, you're yes, the Civil the- War movie. You're mm. mixing up two stupid things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. I, if it was like a Mexican-based takeover, maybe I could see Texas and and uh, California <laughs> linking up. But then there's a huge gap that you have to try to hook in Arizona and New Mexico as well. So yeah, actually trying to think this stuff out. You got a lot of. This is why Dune, this is why Game of Thrones is awesome because of the thought put into the governments of these worlds. Oh my god. Everything collapses. Still have pro wrestling. Woohoo. Yeah, is the wrestling, are they now like, America's just fine with them being gone and now they got an uh, international gap between them and Mexico? How does Mexico deal with Texas? I feel like if Texas seceded, they would have a real problem sustaining what would have before been like federal funded, you know, like border patrol and stuff. I know Texas has their own stuff in the guard and whatever, but there's just a lot of can of worms you have to address if you're going to include that. And yeah, now you take a state of the union having uh, sports in the union and now you flip it to another international or another country. Are they still even in our league? How does this league work? Is it just Texas exclusive? I'm still finding it hard to believe Texas can be, you know, secede. And I mean, how do they defend themselves against everybody else? Um, yeah. Also, if Texas secedes, uh, Alpha Core, Alpha Core. Yeah, I'm assuming they make these cops. Well, that's what's interesting too. All right, like. In Avengers, you have S.H.I.E.L.D., this government agency that can afford helicarriers and Quinjets and all of this, on top of Tony Stark joins the mix. So he has his own tech to help add, eventually make an Avengers facility, which I'm assuming, I can't remember if they made it before or after S.H.I.E.L.D.'s fallout with Captain America, but I'm assuming there's some sort of, in that world there's uh off the off the page there's some like government interaction with tony stark having a essentially a militarized base in new york <laughs> <clears throat> um but there's enough groundwork even with those like pockets those plot holes there's enough groundwork it's like it's plausible you know with this one it's like all right you got texas but like does oklahoma join because we're kind of tied at the hip politically so i think te- oklahoma would join then you gotta think about florida especially in our current climate in america florida would be interested and then that would spill into the whole south southeast i'm talking about the original confederacy at that point yep like if not more pretty much every constitutional carry state in the middle of the country would be you know like, they did this in uh Old man Logan, you know, this fall it happens, and I got all these pockets of America that are, you know, divvied up by the villains. You don't get the explanation exactly, but it's like enough times passed where it's like the world's gone to shit. 
And so, yeah, the villains have taken over pockets, and Hulk's got his own stretch of land. And they explain some stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim Sock, my sources from Disney said it's rumored that everything is big in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Solari has to be Superman in le- level and power because he's the reason the war was won. Logic would say he defeated the military in other excepts, regardless of abilities. Yeah. But yeah, the reason I was bringing up the Avengers is like the helicarrier. They he copies like the tower from DC and the helicarrier setup of Avengers. And it's like if Texas is seated, I'm assuming they're just gonna go further right. They're gonna be further into like less taxes for these libertarian people. And so who the fuck's paying for a giant helicarrier over Floor Spark? There's... It's a whole can of worms, and I, Eric has fucking no explanation to make it make sense. <laughs> that's, book number, that's book number eight. Just you know, hold on, hold, hold on. on, hold on to your butts. <laughs> Meanwhile, you got excepts like the Purple Man roaming around free that could end Solari, no issue. Yeah, uh, you're talking about barbecue, Billy Bob Quinn, and somehow he singes Solari's eyebrows. And nothing else doesn't get his head of hair. I didn't even realize that someone pointed out in that sequence through the book, he's wearing the shades to cover up his eyebrows were burned off. And it's like, well, no wonder I didn't realize that because the art is inconsistent with that detail. Cause sometimes he has eyebrows after that. Sometimes he doesn't. Uh, I took it as professor X accidentally killed every mutant almost because his mind was going and couldn't control it. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, let's continue some more of this. Uh, Michael Copper. Liliad Renashi's partner <laughs> needed to be opposite of her considering the story I wanted to tell. I purposely wanted them to be this way for the sake of the dynamic. I've always been intrigued by the concept of eye-based powers. <laughs> I don't think it's something that has been expanded upon nearly enough in comics. <laughs> I figured Michael would be my shot at doing so, making the audience wonder what interest Michael has in Floor Spark is something that was purposeful. It's not about him being mysterious. It's more that you all know that he's at least ambitious. So what does his existence mean for characters like Isom or Darren Fontano? <sighs> Any thoughts on that? Uh, Eye-based powers. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean like Cyclops? <laughs> Never heard of him. Superman? Oh, yeah. I beams, yeah, yeah, Superman. <laughs> but yeah, he makes it sound like it's like, yeah. In I saw him, they're in the club, and he does like the eye thing. But it's like, what the fuck is that doing? Is he manipulating people? Is he like some sort of Eros character with his eyes? It just seems like he's like a rich guy. That's all I got from the Alpha Core book. All right, Darren Fontana. Let's look at his art. It's all right. These side profiles aren't flat like Sam's were. They're not Egyptian. And he's got a lot of rings, got a lot of bling. R. Kelly. Santuan was meant to oppose Isom physically. I wanted a different character to oppose him mentally and ideologically. <clears throat> Creating an intimidating villain without powers that was meant to challenge a character with special abilities is not easy. It's exactly why I wanted to do it. Um Lex Luthor. <laughs> um, uh, does Batman have any? Well, he's got Two Face. Two Face isn't powered, is he? No, he's nope. just a guy with machine guns and a like a gang. Kingpin. Uh, Kingpin. Well, Kingpin's depending on the conqueror, he's like pretty fucking. Yeah. Jack. Does Bane uh, have any powers? He's got Venom. He's 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 enhanced by steroids essentially. But he doesn't um, use any superpowers other than his strength, right? He's just a strength freak, right? Okay. Steroids, yeah. Um, 
Riddler. Riddler just does riddles. <laughs> Joker. Um, no powers. He's a manipulator. Sure, but it seems, at least depending on the, who's writing it, that Joker's like turn in the vat also like enhances him. That's why you can like get the fuck beat out of him by Batman. I thought it time. just made him fucking crazy. <laughs> That's what you'd think, but form. it, it just, seems. Just like... I don't know if it's explicit, but it seems that like he's kind of like enhanced physically by it. That, it yeah, it's it's one of those. Thus far, what I've read, it's like you can kind of piece it out, yay or nay, about that point. But I always yeah. lean on the side of he is enhanced, not just crazy. Um. But yeah, let me see. That's exactly why I wanted to do it. In fact, it's more intriguing that there's someone out there who strikes fear in people in a world full of super beings, doesn't even have powers. He clearly hasn't read comics. <laughs> I told people all the time I'm a novice reader, but it's like I instantly like pulled the mind a couple of people already that are icons of villainy. Like Sleuther's almost always the leader of the fucking Legion of Doom. Mm-hmm. He's a brain guy. Tony Stark, he's not a villain necessarily, but like he's just a guy with a suit. He's he's Batman with a mech suit. Um this is where Darren Fontano comes into play. He gives off a king of the city vibe while also having a history with Isom. He carries himself respectfully, yet you all can see that he's pretty cutthroat. His appearance was something I came up with in great detail for Marcus, uh, which made him made it easy for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay he's like carries himself respectfully he's like when he meets i saw him it's like yeah we went to high school together and i didn't like you then and now you show up is he sold it in the pitch is like oh he, he's an old friend darren and mm-hmm. then darren says to him exposition like i haven't seen you in like 20 years and you were a bitch then <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, we get the Taylorsville guy. Nice. Cedric Gaucho. <laughs> wait, 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 let me look this up. What is a gaucho? I feel like it's a rope or something. Um Gaucho is a skilled horseman. <laughs> Reputed to be brave and unruly. The figure of the gaucho is this folk symbol of Argentina, Uruguay, Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. Mm-hmm southern part of bolivia and the south of chilean patagonia hey, skilled horseman <laughs> did, did, have we found the his alter ego ray oh my god that's gonna be funny if it turns out chuck read this and he's like i'm gonna use gaucho because he's probably read a lot probably watched a lot of movies good ideas yeah. so he probably read it like i know what a gaucho is or he looked it up and he's like that's going to be fun if Taylorsville ends up being mm. horsemen. <laughs> oh my God. We're totally going to have to clip this and save it for like a spoiler. <laughs> if it's like, I called it T- March 30th, 2024. You called Gaucho. Cedric is one of the characters I had the most fun creating. Much like Darren Fontano, I wanted other important people without powers. Though we, though we'd designed. The the weed design it doesn't read right to me. No. no. <coughs> uh, I guess he's saying though, though we had designed Isom suit, I didn't want to have him already fighting in it. Cedric was used used as a device to explain the existence of the suit, while also introducing someone that you know has clout with other su- special mm-hmm. beings. That conversation between him and Isom towards the end of Isom lets the reader in on so much. I developed his whole backstory in great detail and dropped plenty of nuggets for the reader during his first appearance. You want to keep tabs on Cedric. The physical description that I gave to Marcus emphasized the fact that he's very suave because why wouldn't he be? He's a designer after all. Oh, so he's a little, he's a, little, he's a gay boy like in uh, She-Hulk. <laughs> yeah, or... The little fucking chick from The Incredibles that made their suits. Oh, yeah. She's great. Yeah. I mean, that's who he created. A fucking 
costume maker. Who cares? Well, if he turns out to be Horseman, you're going to make your words, Dave. No, because <laughs> he just said he doesn't have any powers. Well, Horseman doesn't have powers. He's Batman. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, everybody's really onto something here. Me investigating Gaucho. Yeah, I mean, the guy makes the make a guy makes super suits. Why not make one of your own? Yeah, well, uh, he threatens Isom. He's like, "Well, we can take care of you." And it, what if it actually is like Batman? Horseman has anti Isom repellent in his belt. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Solari. What's funny is looking at this suit is like it's not much different, but having Alpha Core and these little highlights of white that really makes a difference. I mean, still not great, but like this is way better than the actual comic. Uh, I knew early on writing of the story that I wanted to have a super police team. For a big, rich city as such as Force Park, it makes all the sense in the world that there'd be a team developed by local government to handle super-powered villains. Well, that team needed to grow, so I started with the creation of a leader that was meant to give off the impression that he was very familiar with Yaira. Brian Solari looks like a very traditional superhero, but he's not a vigilante. Exuding confidence and strength is something that we emphasize. When you see him in the book, you know right off the bat that he's the clear leader of Alpha Corps. When I sent the information, no, it's very clear he's Superman ripoff. Um, but he could just be like the the brawn of the team, you know. <laughs> the confidence here Eric has, like, well, clearly he leads the Alpha Corps. Um, when I sent the information to Marcus, he nailed it so well that there needed to be no corrections in the concept art. What the? Then why isn't he drawn like this? Also, if you're at Alpha Core, Joe really fucks up his look. It's very inconsistent. Sometimes he looks like Frank Quietly's uh, Superman. Other times he looks fucking fugly. Fugly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was what's funny when I when I scrolled through this really quick and saw like, wait, Braxwell has a first name. Why did you introduce him as just Braxwell? Is it Jemima? Oh, Jer- Jeremiah? Jer- Jeremiah? <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah. See, Never again, seen it that way. He's doing the stupid black writing of names. Oh. Okay. The first member of Alphacore <laughs> that the reader sees is Braxwell. And it was always meant to be that way as he was the first member of the team that I created. With his existence came the creation of the Alphacore logo as well. Though he technically... Though he technically is just a super cop. I want him to look cool and unique. Hell, I wanted all of them to have their own personalities with uniforms that represented that. I conjured up this helmet and jacket combo that Marcus really made uh, look well. He's the most mysterious of the group, and I thought the visor on his helmet was a good way to really display that. (laughs) Yeah, he's really cool. He's a black guy with a helmet. And yeah, <laughs> he looks like a fighter pilot. That's what he looks like. Yeah, <laughs> <He's been mysterious. laughs> looks like he's wearing a fucking Air Force fighter pilots or you know p- pilot outfit. What the fuck? It's nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Dick tweeted that uh, meme with his his uh, helmet head on that black guy cosplaying as him because it oh. looks so real. Like the whole just the whole glance. retardo thing is so funny that they do Ricky retardo. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because like that meme stands out well more way more than Braxwell. So like, hey, yeah, Braxwell. People are like, wait, who? Oh, it, the fucking helmet guy doesn't say anything besides bet your ass. Um, <laughs> all right, here's Ingrid Valdez. Let's look at her. Cool. Also, why are they oh, always legs so thick? What do you mean? Like her, look at her thighs. Look how thick her thighs are. What's wrong with that? I don't know, man. There's no. I mean, you know, like Frank Cho. Mm-mm. I feel like I feel like uh, Marcos is really trying to uh, inspired by Frank Cho. He draws thick girls. 
uh, I probably had the most fun creating Ingrid as she was the most unique power sets of all the elf corners. She can't fly like the other characters, but you get the sense that she's very capable and unafraid. That's what I call a wire caster. What? I've never heard that term. Wire caster. What is that in our way? What's a wire I caster? Never, I have no idea. Never heard it. Wire, wire caster. caster. Uh, when I look it up, I find casters for wire shelving. So casters are like the wheels you put on shelves. What wire caster? Oh, oh! I think if you go on, he it's it's, it's her power. Oh, she's casting oh. wires. A wire okay. caster. I gotcha. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you at least know she's able to emit a wire that's strong enough to even contain Yaira. So Wonder Woman. What it ropes? Why would you call them wires? Yeah, oh, you know, he's probably thinking electric. That's Maybe. Probably the, yeah. See, trying to deconstruct Eric sometimes because he's too confusing. <laughs> uh, I told Marcus what I wanted from the suit, such as it being armored and having the holstered gun. But having the wire sort of wrap around her arms was the addition of Marcus. Huh. Oh, so she's Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, that wasn't ever clear to me. And she's like casting her wires. Oh, fucking Eric. Oh, we're getting some Norfica. Validan. See, he's he's a valid guy. So I named him Validan. <laughs> I didn't feel satisfied at the ending of the story the way I initially planned, which was with the conversation between Isom and Cedric. <clears throat> sure, we gave the audience something to look forward to, but I figured we could do no more. <laughs> I wanted some characters that were godlike, and I f and figured I'd read it into Norse mythology to get inspired. Before I went through his backstory, I designed Valadan's physical appearance as he first would be seen in Isom 1. And later, Marcus and I design his uniform justifying his existence on earth came with the creation of his, his band norfrica i'm a metal head so i thought to use a metal band to make things even more intriguing i made sure that there was another guy like being in the band takari the number of ideas that went flowing through my brain was insane i had to catch myself because i almost got ahead of myself valid valid dan's introduction was the perfect teaser Wee. <laughs> uh, that really told me nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's Dokuman. Ooh. I'm scary. <laughs> it's uh, Grim from Billy and Mandy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had aspirations to do trading cards with our first release, and this was understood very early on in the development of the process. With that being said, I didn't want to do basic trading cards that were based on some of the characters we introduced. Giving them a lore was my way to, to tie the actual cards into the universe. So I created Dokumon, and the trading cards you collect are his. The fun part will be when you see him in the books, you'll learn why he has the cards in the first place why he's keeping up with people in our universe. I told Marcus that I wanted them to be mysterious and cosmic like, and this was the awesome design that he came up with. Uh, it looks like a He-Man goal. I, I, I wouldn't say awesome. Awesome might be a little bit too, too much. <sighs> Did you see the Yara cover? I think it's cover B. Uh, have you, have you looked I, at this nerd way? I saw the I saw the covers. I don't. I'm not sure. Was um, he on one of the covers? Well, I, it might be one of his henchmen. Let me see. I think it's cover B. All right. Let me share this. 
This looks like any fucking Scooby Doo ghost. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But, yeah, that's been bugging. I'm like, what does this remind me of? Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. But well, probably kind of because I don't like Scooby Doo. Like he's fine that I'm older. Like, but as a kid, this is mm-hmm. not when he's like, I'm so brilliant. But like as a kid, I like got irritated with Scooby Doo because I really liked watching it. And at one point, I'm like, ah, oh. like I'm always waiting for like it to be real that they're you know hunting and then every time it's like oh that's the guy we saw earlier in a mask scaring us it's like at some point it clicks and like wait this is the whole fucking show well and yeah, so as like a kid i got really irritated with it, but i really love the zombie movie because it's like here's the twist they're actually really zombies haunting them like that was a cool twist We're like how do they deal with this because they're always pulling masks off people and then they try to pull a mask they like rip a zombie's head off uh I'm gonna have to rewatch that because I, I I watched the fuck out because it was on Cartoon Network like every weekend. Uh, all right, so this is the Yaira Cover B. Um, let me see if I can. All right, here we go. Oh, I I did see this one. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can zoom in. Why do you have these zoom buttons, Eric? You're... It's not. Do you have to put it in another tab? No. All right, so here's this weird possibly bug parademon ghoul he says i'm looking forward to putting you on ice (laughs) just like what's that gonna do she's ice powered (laughs) the chilling first issue see i actually like this corny like 60s style pitch on this cover it says first appearance of stefania yanessa yantoni and magus newmite these fucking names. Uh, God. New, new mites, all right. I'm fine, new mite, but having it paired Magus new mites, like uh, that's too much, Eric. Yantony, it's like I'm sure this is some weird fucking slave name in his <laughs> lineage, like Isom. When I heard Isom, it instantly makes me think he's like Islamic. Oh my god, these weird fucking names. Keep it coming, Eric. Keep it coming. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you in the chat, and then we're going to talk about uh, EVS. And uh, I think Katie's live. Let me check in the Twitter DMs. Yeah, she's live. She's live, yeah. So if you're interested uh what Katie's doing, go over there. Um, appreciate you having me on. But if you want to hang around, then cool. I meant to Ethan's live again, again, too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <You can stop laughs> Double yourself, trash. Man. Yeah. Um, I, well, I'm wondering what's what's going on now since he already did a morning trash. Let me see where I left off. Um, let's see. I was here. Tim. Even buttholes. Wait. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, you got except like the Pearl Man. Um, let's see. Okay. Wolverine survived because of his healing factor. The one back Brex will beat up, beat by listening to music. Yeah. Um, you already know my response there. Cyclops, Medusa, Lee look from Code Code Gaius. What's that? I gotta look that up. I have no idea what this is. Lee look. Hmm. Interesting. Um Deathstroke is enhanced. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought he was like a mercenary. Uh Kingpin doesn't work because he'll he'll take blast from dr doom but then get his butt handed to him by daredevil yeah kingpin seems to be an inconsistent character uh power wise killer croc is just a freak of nature yeah killer croc got different iterations though some of it's like he's born that way or it's a skin condition um because i read a little bit of killer croc to just make sure i didn't like have some sort of convergent evolution where I'm like unknowingly copying plot point killer croc. Sure. It feels right. like there's no besides him being a crocodilian, there's no similarity from what I um yeah, history with Ison, but he doesn't understand why Avery's able to fight Santuan because no one in the books knows Avery's an except for whatever weird reason. Oh, yeah, here's my prediction. I'm expecting Isom to be Jesus powered, that he is an anomaly except. Because they make a point with the doctor saying, like, well, he's he doesn't show his except in our blood tests, but we will have to do more in depth tests. So it's like there's 
I guess a swab or a blood test of like an initial screen where it's like, oh, they're an X set. And he doesn't show up, so maybe this, he, he's like got a more rudimentary factor that shows. Um, but yeah, I'm expecting to be Jesus power. That's my guess. I don't know what y'all think of that. Well, if the trailer can be and be believed, and he keeps saying, you know, he trained his body to do what other people couldn't, almost sounds like a one punch man. If yeah. You- as soon as you said yeah, that, I'm like, just, one punch. <laughs> yeah, I can, somebody, fall somebody from, who, I can fall from a 80-story building and land on a car. But I don't know why you can survive it yet. I don't know why. You, that's a thing. Oh, my God. It's funny you say that, Roland. Because Darren has the voice of a pimp from Boondocks. Um, let me go read me some ice on really quick. I'll give you. This is how I've like always read Darren. Uh, before any memes came up, this was just me reading with Rookie because Rookie is uh, not familiar with like black talk at all. Like when uh, he's like, you really on one. I don't talk like that, but I, it totally made sense to me. But Rookie's like, what? What does that mean? Like the, the sentence isn't over. Like I'm like, Rookie, he's talking black. He's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, you're really on one. Like you're crazy, man. Like I had to translate some of ice on for rookie. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let me find this. uh, The Darren sequence. I love the Darren sequence. Uh, It's not my favorite part of ice. My favorite part is uh, when he fights San Juan again and they have this weird exposition about accepts and they're like, why are we talking about this? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay give you uh my taste of uh, a little taste of how i read darren um uh i sounds like i'm not here to be in your business but mrs newman is looking for jasmine and what they sent you to me you a detective now you know where she's at follow me sit down i'm good not a request in our first year of high school you and i competed for roster spots on a freshman team you were a decent athlete but you didn't make it the coaches didn't even try to find room for you but you didn't complain you didn't even try out next year you spent the next years being a subpar student that fine sister of yours outperformed you academically and athletically but you never seemed envious That made me curious. We were cool, but I didn't admire you. You had both of your parents around, a good household, and you somehow managed to amount to nothing. You just faded into the shadows, really heard from, set up for success, and you did nothing with it. When people like me go away, we're usually dead or in jail. Yet I built myself an empire, some of it the legal way, some of it not so much, but an empire nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that voice permeates into your consciousness when you read the next Ripperverse Darren entry. Uh, that's not going to happen. Oh, you got to <laughs> read it somewhat legally, somewhat not so much. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> that is like the first I saw me between me and a rookie or when we say somewhat legally, somewhat not so much. That's that's what we're pulling from. Uh, Kong became a little Batman esque in Iron Man and Godzilla versus Kong. Kong got enhanced tech and had a team that could communicate with him. Godzilla just went full honey badger mode. Uh, yeah, I did see Godzilla. I thought it was dog shit. Um, it was fun dog shit, though. Like I drank almost a whole bottle of fireball in the theater from start to finish. And the movie definitely got progressively better <laughs> because of and that the bottle got empty here. Yeah. Well, it got better in the sense of like, I'm watching this and I still have like my critical mind going somewhat. And I'm just like <laughs> when, so I don't know if you've watched the monster verse BTM, but the monster verse. Yeah. The Godzilla Kong movies. Oh yeah. All of them. All right, so you know how there's a hollow earth. Yeah. All right. So in Kong New Empire, it's Godzilla. <laughs> Kong is in hollow earth. Godzilla's on the surface. This is, I'm keeping the alphas apart. 
And at some point, the whole narrative is that Kong is, in the scientist's view, mindlessly seeking more of his kind. Right. That they know it's not going to pay off. But he's doing so nonetheless. And at some point around his lair, he like pierces a veil or finds a hole. And so then it's like subterranean zone. So the idea is that the it, the earth is even more hollower than before. Okay. <laughs> the hollower earth. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm like, are you fucking oh my god. Like they make a point to say only five percent of hollow earth has been charted thus far. So there was no need to do hollow earth. It's all <laughs> hollow, so you have a eternity of escape clauses for more discoveries. It's like we keep finding weird shit in the ocean in right. 2024. You don't. Right. We have real science to like give you the plausible bullshit excuse for you're already talking about monsters, titans. You don't need to like there's no need for more explanation of like, well, where'd you find that thing? It's <laughs> <laughs> like Kong is an ape. Apes, even though he's giant, like you just pull from that science, where, like apes have a general territory, but Kong is his only kind, so he's like going outside of those normal bounds. It's it's so simple, and they overcomplicate for no reason. I just I fucking laugh, and I, I felt like there was points. There wasn't a lot of people in the showing I went to at like three in the afternoon, but I feel like uh, they definitely like, noticed. Like I'm laughing at parts that they don't think's funny. <laughs> Sure, right. Because <laughs> I'm on movie YouTube, so I'm really paying attention to dumb like details. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you're the guy that they're going. Oh, not one of these guys. Everything, yeah, is, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was definitely Watch enjoyable. Colors, it's fun, dude. Just have a good time. Well, that's what's annoying too. Is like, um, the the girl that was the communicator with Kong with the sign language, the, the last eerie. Um, it turns out there's way more eerie and hollow earth and they find like their super temple and oh. they all talk telepathically apparently and also understand every language that people are saying and it turns out that that girl is like eerie jesus oh and so they were like i guess resurrect mothra which is unclear if like they just have more mothras to birth and it's like it's a reincarnation character or mm -hmm. Because, like, in the old movies, it's just there's always another egg. So yeah, there's Mothra, another egg. Mothra is really a title for the species, the, like, representative or whatever. So it's just like, huh? And then another thing that irritated me was, like, it felt very, like, Thor Ragnarok or something where it's, like, they really think if we make it glow, then that's, like, whoa. There's just so much glowing shit in this movie where it's, like, exhausting. It's, like... No, you do the glow when it's special, but like half the fucking movie is like glowy stuff. Like Godzilla just, minus one nailed the glow. Well, I don't even mean like his flame or the frills or something. Also, yeah, my review, my the like interest was pitch was how trans was Godzilla? Because I, I knew this was some talk on the internet, like, oh, they made Godzilla trans, he's pink now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like no it's super saiyan it's like a it's a visual identifier of like he's at a new level so oh they explain he's it just, he's just more power that's why he's pink because okay. he, he he kills a but that's female power empowerment dude well historically it wasn't until the 1800s that pink became a girl color it was a boy color <laughs> my daughter and my wife don't give two shits a pink it's not a thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's for baby girls. And then they grow out of it. Ah, uh, well, if you're like a Barbie girl, I, I like that. I like uh I like bimbos wearing the pink. Uh did you see Godzilla new uh Nerdway? I did not. Uh I meant to, I just never got around to it. It's all right. I mean, it's a visual spectacle, but for me, it's just like I go to like generally I go to see like plot. And then, especially with the way this franchise started with Godzilla 2014, and it's like they've completely dropped any semblance of trying to make a plausible world and have any, like, legitimate underpinning of science for this series. It's just completely think, stupid. You think it's going to make money? Mm, actually, I mean, look at the box office. We're in uh, Sunday. Let me see. 
just released this weekend. Let me see. Godzilla. Because I had a couple of people in the show on my stream last night. So they, they had fun. That's all they could say. They just had fun. It's better than like Transformers, but it's on that level. Right. Um, let me see. 10 hours ago, hit 37 million opening day, which doesn't sound good. Um, deadlines, 12 hours ago. Opening scales up to 75 million. Still second best for Legendary Monsterverse. Um, might hit 80 million. Uh, it's still the second best U.S. can to start for Monsters. Well, also the fifth best Easter weekend opening ever after Warner Bros. BVS. Um, Super Mario Bros. In, uh, Furious 7 and The Fate of the Furious. Um, mostly men, it seems. Half the men were white from their stats, so. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you ever watch, uh, so I've, I've never seen a ticket taker sell me a ticket and then ask me to check my fucking race. How do they know? No, it's probably a, uh, exit polls from certain cities. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you've never watched beyond the trailer. Have you? Yeah. 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 She's yeah. always following these stats and always concerned if there's not enough black people at the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i i watch her off and on not so much lately this has not really been any interesting movies for me to like care about any talk about but i'll watch her from time she she has legitimacy because uh, i don't know if it's still the case but her channel is like owned by deadline or their umbrella company oh. at least it was and she's had a lot of like i think she's had probably like a 70 or 80 percent confirmed track record on like spoilers and scoops so she's a real insider on top of being like a big review channel so i mean i definitely get annoyed with all of her like lgbt uh diversity quota stuff she spouts but uh she's got her value you know so she's worth watching especially when she inadvertently gets into like culture war talk and it's like look even she is talking about too much wokeness like <laughs> so she has that validating factor as well if like she will say something it's like you know it's fucking bad if she is kind of like oh man this is not gonna help these movies you're really pushing this crap <laughs> uh john diggles was a former spec ops character his superhero name is spartan oh from arrow okay uh yeah tisa doesn't like the spelling of jeremiah either andrew Rowland, thank you so much for five bucks says i think alpha core is based on the zod trio solari is zod ingrid is ursa braxwell is nom the silent brawler uh i don't know much about superman shit i hate the first movie so i've never watched the other ones no i um, see that yeah it's yeah, just that's what i thought when i first when i first saw him i thought it was zod and his group huh yeah yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying, like, oh, I could see you hating Superman. <laughs> Mr. Kareem Superman? Yeah. First movie. I hate it. Yeah. Also, it's funny. A lot of people like to use that meme of film, like, getting triggered and then reversing time to save Lois. And it's like, that's kind of like villain shit. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's selfish. Like, no one, no one points the finger at Superman as a piece of shit for, like, what did you undo? What, what, like, uh, I was thinking about this because of the Flash movie, how like Flash was against Spider Man in Spider Verse, the second one, and how they have very opposing views about death. Where um, Spider Verse, they have like set points where it's like this is your Uncle Ben moment for every Spider Man in the multiverse, and so it's like you have to let it happen, and that's the whole reason they didn't want Miles Morales to come because his event hasn't happened yet, and. You know, he's going to try to stop it. It's going to be his death of his dad. And so that's the whole hook. There's two hooks, I guess, with the end of uh, Spider-Verse 2 is Gwen assembling spider people to save Miles Morales um, in the universe that he got dropped in because he got dropped in the wrong one because the spider bit him was from a wrong universe. And yeah, so they're trying to save him and also 
Miles Morales trying to save his dad, he's in the wrong universe because he didn't know his spider was from a different universe. And so the machine sent him to the wrong one. And he meets his alternate self who is in league with Prowler or is Prowler. I'm not sure. Uh, (laughs) So uh, that one's all about like saving people at all costs. That's the drive Miles Morales. And then Flash is like, sometimes you gotta let people die, including your mom. (laughs) And I like that. I like that question. And then you think about Superman by reversing a death and like he never gets he had the benefit of coming out in 78 when the only nerds that would talk about it were only in the comic shop and not online (laughs) um (laughs) but it's like it's actually arguably villainous self-centered what what are the ramifications for the dc multiverse doing that what what mothman effect or whatever the butterfly effect yeah what's the butterfly effect doing that yeah And then in Flash, like, in, like, the Convergence, they show all the different universes of DC on film. They have Christopher Reeves and Supergirl. Mm -hmm. And they're, like, looking through, and it looks like they're approving of Flash letting his mom die by (laughs) fixing the time (laughs) stuff. (laughs) Uh, So it's just, yeah, that I guess in the current state of, like, in-depth nerd talk, that just makes me not like him more uh but yeah let me play you a little thing um uh, a little stinger where'd it go oh my god rookie put so many clips in here because we share the same stream yard so it's hard to find my clips where do you put clips in stream yard on uh on brand uh in uh video clips here we go all this fucking time I'm opening tabs and keeping it open. <laughs> <laughs> Slowing your time. internet down. Yeah. Here you go, Andrew. Here's a little stinger for you. I'm not a detractor. I'm not a detractor. I'm not a detractor. Don't shoot, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I love that clip. I made that organically hanging out with Katie on a stream. She was at a measly like a couple hundred subs. Look at her now. <laughs> it's crazy you and katie btm you know, skyrocketed it's great to see detracting really pays off uh dc has the damn science police to handle the legion of superheroes huh not a big dc guy so i could not know that goalpost said alpha core is an original concept you guys compare it to marvel dc is just disingenuous it's not it's comics so those are like the marquee examples you idiot it's why the boys is great because it's satire of ma- mainly DC comics. It's actually crazy. I don't know if you watched the boys either, y'all, but yeah, the comic history is funny because for six issues were printed by DC comics and they got really triggered by it. And so they like kicked it. And so then it became a dynamite property and now it's an Amazon studios property. It's like, skyrocketed to be in the same level of conversation as DC and Marvel for its satire. They got to be kicking themselves. That could have been a Warner brothers project. Mm. Especially with the failures of Warner brothers with DC and film. Yeah. It makes perfect sense to compare them. Oh, yeah. Uh, rip reverse goalposts. <laughs> It's not a rich concept. Superheroes as cops, government agents, corporate heroes, etc. Isn't new. <laughs> I love <laughs> goalposts getting owned. Cope and seethe. Goalposts. Cope and seethe. Uh, just as we are. We're completely coping and seething right now. Uh, we got Doc Butcher saying hello. Hello, Doc Butcher. Uh, I forgot the other Norfolk guy. They didn't have a page. I didn't see a page in the tweets for him. Let me go back. Did I miss one? No. They're... Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just read it. Um, Takari. For whatever reason, people forget that Africa has its own folklore and mythology. This aspect is especially under using comic books. The creation of Takari is my attempt at giving this shot. Uh, he's a guitarist in Norfolk, much like Validan. Marcus and I developed his appearance in the book first and foremost. When we went back and designed his suit, it came out absolutely amazing. 
wanted his attire to be completely rude in African tradition, sending Marcus some references. Much like with everything else, Marcus just gets it. You're Even not sharing the, the screen. Right. Yeah. No, I know. Um, okay. Let's see. I was trying to hurry up and address that comment. Um, here you go. Here's what he looks like. Here is Takari. This is like the one thing I'll give Eric credit for is the the blur about African mythology. Because, yeah, I really hate when they uh, race swap or just shove in. Here's black. And it's like, you know, like there's a whole bunch of African or like uh, American gods show with uh, Neil Gaiman has this weird spider guy that is a. Uh, I looked him up. I can't remember his name, but it's, there's an interesting little like wiki page about the like roots of that character. Um, he's kind of like a, like an African Loki type character as we think of in comics, you know, with uh, being a devious villain or I don't even know if he's meant to be a villain in African folklore, but he's definitely like nefarious. You can definitely pull that. But yeah, that was, uh, that was Dakari. Sorry. I missed that page. Tisa. Thank you. Uh, with names like those, Mari's going to be handling the paternity test. <laughs> Good one. <clears throat> like Super Tisa and everyone else, I saw him and Offcore doesn't have any form of originality and making up numbers doesn't mean the book is better. Good one, Becky. Rip car. <laughs> I saw him survive fall because his back was already blown out. Oh, good mm. one. How dense is I saw him? He wouldn't go all the way through. <laughs> I saw him reminds me of Luke Cage almost. Yeah. He's definitely a Luke Cage ripoff. Or maybe Mr. Terrific. I don't know nothing about that character, though. But I think I've heard Eric talk about him a lot. Uh, if Kong would have never seeked out the whole movie, would have not happened. Um, It could still happen. It's hollow earth. Godzilla could have just fell through a tube. You know? Um. And actually, the movie kicks off because for like the people being involved, there's like the stupid sequence in the seismographs, but then Kong comes up to get his tooth fixed. That's another thing I was laughing at where it's like, oh, no, Kong's got a broken tooth. And then they just have this vet that actually has a history with the doctor lady. And it's just like, oh, yeah, no big deal. I just already have a Titan tooth ready to swap out. It's like a giant metal tooth we put in. It's like just the like blase nature of like also his like metal handy gets there's it turns out they they essentially set up a dichotomy like Hulk and Abomination. So uh Godzilla is going to have to fight this ice turtle thing that looks remind, it'll remind you of Angiris, but it's not Angiris. <clears throat> it's called Shimo. And it's essentially they say it caused the Ice Age. And the monkey that's the opponent for Kong, he's kind of a orangutan dimension like arms, but he's more or less like an orange chimp. And somehow he has a crystal that he points at the turtle to like mind control it. They never explain what the fuck that is. And the ice turtle blasts Kong's hand. So you think he's going to get like frostbit or it's going to get frozen. And he breaks his hand off and it's mm. going to be the twist for his metal arm. But it's, no, it's just literally like a, like a palmless glove over his hand. And it's like, but he got like, I'm assuming frostbit, but they never make it like a real hindrance hmm. that like damages him. Really? It's just like, Oh no, I got like nerve damage. It's just, mm. And it's like, oh, they just, yeah, we uh, we got all these weird augmentations ready, uh, and then the government shut us down because we were making these. And it's like, what? You just <laughs> already have a giant, like Kong's supposed to be three hundred feet tall, and so you're assuming this glove's at least like twenty five feet long, if not bigger, and it's got all the dexterity of like a human hand ready to go. And it's like, do they even test this? Like, just things you think about with like sci fi, mm. they just throw out the window. It's like, whatever. He's got a metal hand. It's a, we can sell more Kong toys this way. It's like, so obvious. <sighs> I'm a detractor, says Becky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tim. Um, 
Mothra. It was cool to see Mothra back. It's funny too because I was looking at Roll Thirty Four Godzilla stuff with uh, Rookie after stream. And it was very enlightening. Like they already got Shimo art. I don't know how long Shimo's been out as far as people aware of the Ice Turtle, but um, it was funny because there was a Godzilla ninety eight uh, piece I saw. And I remember seeing recently that apparently Roland Emmerich told the designers of Godzilla 98 to make them sexy. That's apparently like a real scoop about the design of 98 Godzilla. So it's not just that it's based on iguana, but it's a sexy iguana. <laughs> Either y'all like the 98 Godzilla? Yeah, it was okay. The broader one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it for what it That's was. That's what got me into Godzilla because it came out when I was like seven. And I was obsessed. I had one toy and I had the puppet. There's like a weird puppet. You could squeeze his mouth and he'd roar. Um, I was fucking obsessed with Godzilla. And that's my favorite Godzilla design is that one. And we, we were watched it last year. And it's like, I actually think this might be the best Godzilla movie. A lot of people crap on it. And yeah, it's definitely ripping off Jurassic Park at points. But I think it's like the perfect synergy of like, awareness of the atomic bomb uh inspiration while doing its own thing and having some sort of science awareness for its plot you know it's like oh like he's pregnant because like he's a fucking lizard so it's you know lizards have this happen they can asexually reproduce a lot of good stuff in that movie it's just third act i think falls off and his girlfriend is kind of a dumb bitch so <laughs> you don't really care about the love story uh discovery says uh why everything is so ugly that's bob marley <laughs> enveloped in green farts <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's good and discovery would know super potholes pot man <laughs> <laughs> well as soon as i saw norfrica i'm like jesus christ this guy's an idiot he literally fused norse in africa yeah right uh, the camera comment was related to how they know who was purchasing the tickets also when you registered with amc i'm on a free account but i still get deals or points uh i do cinemark that's my local theater hey what's up chris holm um i think i'm trying to think there's something else tim made me think of godzilla oh yeah the so the black guy from king of the monsters is or king, it's king of the monsters right um he's in this one and he's kind of key to like get the ball rolling for the doctor lady because even though she works for monarch they're getting all these weird seismographs from the station in hollow earth and people are like, it's probably nothing. I wouldn't worry about it. And it's like, you now know about Hollow Earth and Titans, and you're trying to like cordon Godzilla to not destroy everything. Because like he shows up in Rome, and multiple times he sleeps in the Colosseum, like a little nest. <laughs> and he destroyed a nuclear facility to like energize himself in France. So it's just a very frustrating movie like thinking about it i'm like oh my god but yeah the black guy he's like a, he was already a weird conspiracy theorist about titans in the f first introduction and they really follow through with that and it's just i don't, don't know what they're doing because he's a good guy his wacky brain is actually like key to help the doctor lady cause she's like the only one that will i guess believe in him because everyone that watches them doesn't like they're just trolling him i guess mm -hmm. but he's actually like a brilliant mind with his paranoia and conspiracy thoughts and so i don't know what they're going for there like with the boys they have a kind of white supremacist alex jones pipeline narrative in season two and it's like okay i get that narrative i don't necessarily agree with it but i definitely see the angle i see the justification uh of like a Hollywood narrative to spin that fine, whatever it makes sense. This one didn't make any sense, especially how they paid it off where it's like, what, why is, I don't, I feel like they're trying to make some meta commentary about 
internet people, but he's actually like key to the plot, so it didn't make any sense to me. It's a frustrating movie. <laughs> they copied Black Guy from Transformers, right? It's a trope now. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I haven't watched all the Transformers movies in a long time, so it's fuzzy. What? Uh, fuck, was it Anthony? Yeah, what, what is that guy? Black Guy in Transformers. <laughs> Anthony Anderson's his name. That guy. He's fucking annoying. Oh, the chubby guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, let me pull up Sturgis, renowned zero. That's where I know I'll find the tweet. Mm. All right, here it is. John Malin. Let's look at this. We'll close out talking about some cancellation. Cancel culture is alive and well at C2E2, says Malin. Five weeks before the show, we have suddenly been removed as exhibitors due to allegations of making non-specific offensive comments. We are artists, publishers, and YouTube entertainers that all suck politics with sometimes edgy humor. Can we be offensive? Absolutely. Are we criminals or har harassers? No. Conservatives? Yes. Your peers? Yes. C2E2 also alleges that Shane Davis... Booth was under his company name was subletting his booth by having others sit in. We have never hidden our intentions from C2E2. We were told to list the booth under a single company by them. Had we known there was an issue for our 20, 20 by 20 premiere uh, exhibitor booth, we would have divided the 2020 into four 10 by 10 booths and asked for them to be combined. If there was an issue, why weren't we approached with a chance to find a solution after spending thousands of dollars? They wanted us out. I fully expect our industry to turn another blind eye to this incident and take no stand whatsoever against this monstrous behavior that continues to rot our industry from the inside. We would like C2E2 to reinstate our booth. C2E2 has a chance to be on the right side of history and end the shameful practice of cancel culture for comic book conservatives in 2024. So what do you think of that? Yeah, that's not right. I mean, it doesn't matter what your, you know, uh, affiliation is. If you if if you have a product, if you have a comic, you know, you should be allowed to go into the con with the booth and offer up your comic to the fans. Yeah, You're paying for the fucking space. You don't yeah. want the money. It's so weird. You don't want our money. And the fans that are going to walk in here for our booth, they're going to show up. And that's more lose. But because I'm not going now, I had plans. My daughter bought her ticket already, and I told her to fucking get a refund. She says, why? And I told her, she goes, okay, I'm going to get a refund. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I can't afford to go to Chicago anytime soon, but, um, that'd be <laughs> cool, you know, fans have already booked stuff and, uh, having the confirmation that they had uh them being there initially yep um i don't know I, it's weird for me because i don't like this vagary stuff this air julyness they did with this cancellation for what it sounds like but um i don't know i can't quite put words to it it's the there's always this talk about um some people try to say wokeness is like money that they're going after like what they see on like twitter the loudest people but i would say i see i don't know to like give give them a bit of uh, credence or like props to them for like they're a whole weird woke hive, you know? And so there's, they sniff out Malin and EVS and Davis and they're conservative. So they're like, you're not allowed. You're against our amoebus leftist agenda. And so it's like, in a way they're sticking to their guns. It's kind of admirable, but they're so sleazy about it. Cause it's like, you think you would vet by this point you, you should know like certain names on a list of like yeah we don't want those people here so you wouldn't accept them to begin with you know if you own a fucking gigantic uh 
floor space that you're trying to rent out space to, the list is not a thing. You just, ever, anybody who wants to sign up, sign up. God dang, it's it's a free market. And uh, I, I have a complete problem with any of this stuff, Any anywhere it happens oh, on either I, side. I just want to clarify, I'm not for this. It's just like part of me wants to like give them props for it. Comics mainstream is like leftist, you know, cabal. And so, you know, at the end, they're like sticking with their guns to be that way. You know, so it's like soft admiration, you know, of like, okay, like we were thinking maybe things weren't going to be this way. Maybe it's like softened up, you know, they've seen the error of this money wise. They've seen the error of being this way. And it's like, nope, we're sticking to our guns there. We're woke, you know? And so. I add. I, I guess I admi- I admire overall this the sense of like um, principles over money because like yeah I totally get the angle of why I miss out on more money potential for this event, but clearly money isn't the priority. Maybe it's because collectively they got like these corporations that you know will say all this lip service to ideas and so they're collectively covered by well i'll still have a job to write woke shit at dc or marvel or wherever image dark horse um so that's what i mean by like admiring it you know it's like okay like i like that uh i can give them some credence or props i don't know the right word right now of like oh, okay you're like actually having a stance it's not just a money thing because that's been the problem it's like Oh, but boycott Bud Light. And then, oh, look, they quickly turn on a dime, start marketing into like white military firefighter cops, you know? Mm-hmm. And that that's what I mean by admire is like, if you have a political stance, actually stick to it. Don't just fall for money. So at this point, but probably the, we'll the, see the them con pay. didn't have the fucking stance until they started getting, getting, uh, text or email directly after they found out he had the booth so that's the problem if they didn't have that stance beforehand that their response should have been to all the other people no that's not how we do things here the guy wanted a booth we let him have a booth we filled out an application we approved it and those three people weren't going to the fucking con anyway that's the worst part of it all they don't even show up they just get all the shit started and then guys like uh, shane and john who actually crowdfunded the ability to get there and rent the booth because it's not cheap. Uh, now they, you know, they got egg on their face after after being told you're in. It's it's not good, man. That <clears throat> they they caved to a mob. That's what they yeah. did. The, the, the con doesn't have that fucking stance. They were reminded to have that stance when enough pe- people tweeted at them. No, I agree, and I, I don't support it. But it's it's like admiring your enemy it's like okay like we're completely mm-hmm. opposed but yeah it's the the enemy influencing the con i, I like how you amended that uh you know so yeah i appreciate con, that obviously the con did not have that stance yeah they did this to frank miller a couple of years ago uh i think he was going to the con in like new hampshire i want to say and then a bunch of people were crying about him writing that uh terrorist book uh, in the 2000s because he really hated Muslims uh, with 9-11 so he was writing like a anti-terror Batman that was just killing Muslims I guess I haven't read it it's called Holy Terror I'm going to read it to uh, you know inspire me goalposts you know clip this I'm, I'm going to read Holy Terror to help uh, formulate my plans against the Ripaverse <laughs> to get guidance from Frank Miller of how to properly terrorize the uh the ripperverse <laughs> good plan good plan critical jihad what do you think i don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if i don't know if other cons have have this subletting thing but megacon didn't uh the ripperverse didn't didn't eric let his uh friday night tights buddies come in and sit at his booth drinker and booth? all of them yep they did all their business at his booth. So now C2E2 could be different. I don't know. But it, it it feels like there's a kind of a hypocritical thing going on where we'll let one group go ahead and sublet and 
do what's do whatever they want to, but this group, eh, no, we don't want that. And then and it's probably yeah. it's probably just them using that as an excuse, another excuse, just so they can pull them from the uh, the lineup. Yeah, yeah, but why can't you just name the booth Comics Gate and whoever shows up that's Comics Gate gets to set up their stuff? Oh shit. Yeah. I'm scrolling through C two E two because I, I never knew about this con until this year. Uh, I'm actually looking. They uh, they're having the boys apparently cast there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a big con, dude. Josh Brolin apparently, or maybe they retweeted something about Josh Brolin. So fucking Thanos and and Cable. That's fucking. It's a big. That's a lot of attention to get. Yeah, and I heard a guy on Ethan's show today said. He spent two thousand dollars already for the hotel and the airfare for him and his wife to go to the con, and he was only going to see Ethan. Mm. Yeah, this is fucked up. Hey, uh, Angus, I got to go, bud. <laughs> no, you're fine. I gotta. I should have quit earlier, but I'm having fun I, with you. I got to head out. I was up too late. <laughs> and uh, thanks yeah, for having me, sleep. On, bud. Get your sleep. Get re-energized. Uh, hopefully, you stream tomorrow. All right, you guys all have a good night. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. um, Dave's BTM Reviews link is in the description for y'all to go sub if you haven't already. Please Uh, do. Yeah, I'm going to kick you so you go to bed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Awesome. Let me get... uh, Can you put your channel link in the private chat so I can copy it into the description? I will get that for you. See you, Dave, says Discovery. Do you have a channel, Discovery? I don't know if I've seen a link of yours or not. Uh, thought I did. Huh. All right, let me go. Let's mail and see if he's got anything else about C2E2. Um, nope, 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 no, quiet, not you. fucking mike miller is like i have no beef with shane i don't think he's actually tried to cancel him for the other two they reap what they sow i'm not going to cry any tears for them what a piece of shit evs belled your ass out in your fucking family (laughs) snakes fucking hate miller also miller draws fine I would say he's more competent in anatomy. Like he's a more technical guy, but nothing about his art pops. His claim to fame is injustice. I, from what I hear, I've not read it, but I've looked at his other art. And it's just like, it's fine. Like draw me a cat man or something like he can do whatever you need. It's going to look hmm. fine, but there's no, like when he tries to crap on Eric or uh, EVS for that, uh, I saw two covers. Like, yeah, you're at least, Looking at it straight, it looks like he fucked up the anatomy on the arm. But it's a pretty cool cover. Besides Isom, because Isom is a boring fucking character and he had no inspiration. But mm-hmm. like Blood Roof and the Monkeys, it's got a lot going on. A lot of action. It's got dynamism. It's got energy to it. Miller mm-hmm. has no energy to his art. It's just like he, he gets anatomy and he misses the, the brilliance of what comics can be. And so it's funny when he's like being this naysayer and critic and stuff. It's like, dude, you just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let me add you to the description. What do you got going on, on your channel? What's been going on lately? Uh, well, you know, doing did a couple of uh, Ripperverse videos. Okay. Uh, my, my 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 last one got a uh, apparently uh, Sturgis went and he fapped it. Oh, and then I saw uh, EVS watched that, so he efapped that video of me being efapped, which was kind of <laughs> and that that was like that, that, that was like a Wednesday morning. I woke up at five o'clock, and he was he was on, and I turned it on. The very first thing I see on on, on the TV is me. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> 
But yeah, I, yeah. I got that. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, 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 go ahead. I was just saying, I'm, if if I'm not doing, you know, Ripperverse stuff, I'm just trying to plug my own stuff. I'm writing books and doing other things, and just trying to be a fun all around comics uh, YouTube guy. Nice. Yeah, no, it, yeah, I've seen my chat and then it's like I looked and clicked somebody that clicked on it realized you had a channel I'm like, oh fuck, I guess I was guy and watch his stuff. So yeah, man, I always try to like look out for other people. Um, you know, the perspectives and stuff. I mean, look at your channel nerd way. So are you, are you already published? I have two books out okay. and I found this on the web for are you published? Oh my god, I don't know why my phone did that. <laughs> I've never had that happen. Sorry. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I have I have two books out, uh, Deadlock and Fallout, and I just finished my third book, Shattered, but that's still in the editing phase. So in the next couple of months, that should be out. Okay. Um, have you gotten like uh, a lot of feedback at all? Like, uh, what's your what's your fandom like thus far? Uh, very very small. Uh, it's they're 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 novels so it's 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 a whole different crowd uh not 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 too far away from the comics crowd but because i'm writing superhero fiction so it's okay so it's have you thought about adapting it to like comic form or is that like down the line or you just focus on the novelizations right now i'm i'm just focused on the novelizations right now i just i just love writing books it's 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 a fun fun experience for me okay how do you uh let me see if you got links um okay so you got a website uh has it got a store yeah you well you can go to amazon and and find my books okay and uh the link should be there in my website uh the evil realm follow that and evil realm all right yeah, I know, because I was looking on the side. It looks like there's comics on the side. UGN Publishing. I don't know if you're like sharing the side or promoting. That else. is no. That's that's actually me. Uh, I'm doing a monthly monthly title uh, where I, I write like a chapter a month for uh, these other two superheroes, uh, Wrath and Blaze, and it's it's basically just as much of a comic book as I can, but just words. And huh. each, each month, it's month. It's just you know, they're they're they're. It's action packed. It's 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 exciting. There's adventure. There's mystery. There's all kinds of stuff going on. No, this looks cool. Look at the uh, the art for this uh, issue eight. The bear and the lady. It's fucking cool. Are you doing AI or do you commission people? I'm just I'm I'm cheap, so I'm doing the AI. But I, what I do want to do is um, this this uh, this Wrath and Blaze thing. I'm going to do ten issues, and then what I want to do is after it's done, I'm going to let it sit sit a while for free, and then I'm going to edit it behind the scenes, kind of clean it up a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to print it up. And I'd like to get a uh, I like to get it to look like a comic book cover. So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna find a good good artist to uh commission and get this thing to look like a comic book. No, this is a cool idea. Um I don't know if you know who Red Gaze is. No, I'm not aware. Okay. I used to be friends with him. I don't really know why we're not, but I haven't talked to him in years and it seems like no one really hears from him. I think he like moved to Europe to get with some lady. I don't know. Um <laughs> I think, I think it's like a comic skate interaction that became like romantic. That's my guess. Don't know though, but um, he's actually the inspiration of meth gator. <clears throat> so before I've like directly said like, yeah, meth gator is inspired by red gates. Cause the, my whole awareness of meth gator story in Tennessee was because he did a video. Cause it was just a funny topic. And then I had this image in my head, mainly basically that swamp piece that you've probably seen before. Let me share mm -hmm that that was more or less what was in my head uh ever since like meth gator came to mind as like an idea but i had no it's like oh that sounds cool it's cool image but i have no idea 
what the story would be. And I was really stuck with what I would do is and what I am doing. It's like a team and T like a whoops, a daisy Marvel, you know? So it's like, all right, if meth heads spill meth on him, why aren't they turning into super freaks? And that was like, mm. that was, that was my stump the whole time. I'm like, and so that's why I, I not just because of meth, but because of like the plot I'm making, that's why I say like breaking bad is definitely like something I'm pulling from in some ways. Um, but no, it's, it's fun. Anyway, reason I mentioned him is, uh, you know, he is working on a comic. And so he did, uh, he wrote like a novel, maybe he's done two. And there's like supplemental, like comic art stuff. He had like the cover of his novel done by Vinny Tartamella. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you're able to read. I don't know how to contact him. I see him. He'll tweet here or there, but he's pretty, MIA for the last few years that I'm aware of. So I would hit him up and like investigate his stuff, see if he's got other issues you could buy that's like stock or whatever, or PDFs to like give him a few bucks or something, and like check it out. And he, he did like a he basically did like this weird fusion of like comic stuff, but it's he sold a novel, you know. Mm-hmm. So him or BA Turner, I'm sure you've probably seen him with uh maybe Dave, but definitely Katie. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got like a novel with like a mini comic on the side. I would look got at, the I novels read... behind me. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've read me. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to back him yet, but I, I want to, I know he's done something like what you're talking about. So those are two examples I know of to, mm-hmm. to pull from. So it's cool. Have you read his book yet? Uh, I've read some of it. What Pretty good. Think? Okay. I'd like it. What what are what are some of your like writing inspirations as far as like th- this is like your model guy you want to be at his level or he's like your inspiration to write? Oh, uh, man, uh, I I well I read a lot of Stephen King, but and I just like the way he you know he'll he'll take a situation and he'll find a small group of people and somehow isolate them from the rest of the world and they got to fight through this crazy monstrous thing. I kind of like to think of, you know, taking my characters like that, you know, isolate them from everything else and have them deal with whatever issue is going on. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't read Stephen King. I've watched his movies, so um, I like some of them from that, at least. Uh, <laughs> whatever they're missing, of course, you know, I'm aware books are always better, more in-depth and fulfilling. Uh, do you think that'll be a problem trying to translate what you're doing to comics should more truncated? Ah, uh, I don't know. It, it, it'll, it'll probably be one of those things where it might be like taken from a book to a movie for go from book to a comic. I'll have to, you know, cut some things out, uh, kind of have to maybe com- combine a few different things. When I, when I first had the idea for the book, I was thinking about making it a comic book originally. Have make make like a six part comic book and have this be the uh, the genesis for a whole new different kind of superhero universe. And at the end of book six, it would you know there would be this huge reveal and there'd be all kinds of stuff going on and and then all kinds of different comic books would spring out of that. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my book here. Um, Deadlock just starts out with two superheroes or should say superhero and a villain. And then the uh, next book fallout has a whole lot more superheroes and supervillains going on. And uh, you find out why towards the end of deadlock and more into the second book fallout, why there's more than instead of just the two that were originally there. Huh. I'm uh, trying to find your, uh, let me see if we change this departments evil realm okay i wasn't able to find uh what do you call it when i was going through your thing it was um it was just the teespring the creator spring store okay Uh, okay i got you saved Uh, oh you sell paperback too okay cool is this just like you upload it into amazon they they print it or is this like 
directly from you. No, it, it, it's from Amazon. It, uh... Oh, another guy, if you haven't read before, um, Chris Fisk, he's been on my channel uh, when I you know, do comic interviews for creators. Um, he's doing something crazy. He, um, he did some polling for his first comic and it's called, um, Infinitel, Infinitel Chronicles. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I really like it. Mm. I put it at the top uh, of what I've read in CG, um, just behind magic cop and EVS. Um, but yeah, he did some polling and a lot of people didn't like the art of the first book. I think it's great. It's a little different for the style of story he's doing. Um, and so he's doing two versions of his book, two different art teams for the same book. Hmm. And also he's doing a manga of his book. I don't know if it is including the first chapter or not, if this is just part two, that is the manga. I'm not sure I need to ask him, but yeah, he's doing like uh, interesting playing around, you know, experimenting with campaigning and stuff. Hmm. I think he's, he's going to be at a comic con in, south new hampshire uh close to massachusetts i was i was i knew i know this because i was looking at where it's at i'm thinking about going if i can acquire the money to uh but yeah i would hit him up too let me send you his link so you can look into him and yeah you can get his book on amazon as well um infinitail there we go fucking chris fist this guy's good um I'll send you his tweet. Um, yeah, you can find his stuff on Amazon. That's how I, because I, I wasn't aware of him when he campaigned. And so um, I think I put out a tweet. I'm like, hey, who should I back? Give me links. And then he's like, you can get my stuff on Amazon. And I'm like, okay, fine. It's like 10 bucks. I mean, I didn't, I didn't expect to actually read anything cool. And I'm like, fuck, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because like, I understand the area where you're an amateur uh you know territories that's fine you know but i don't really expect much and then i read his i'm like fuck man this is you deserve way more fucking attention uh (laughs) (laughs) i hate how like youtubing really influences books and their backing and stuff and you know so it makes sense when you got shills trying to rub elbows eric and you know grease's arm hair keep him in a Mm. good mood maybe maybe he'll get some crumbs off the table (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i uh i get it because i see something like chris fisk where it's like he did fine he funded but he's definitely not making what he should and he's probably you know me knowing trying to commission people it's like he's probably in the hole having made it at least not that he's like in debt or something but you know he's probably spent way more than what he made mm-hmm. my guess i don't know um just because the art's pretty competent and so I don't think he's getting easy stuff or 3D layouts or anything. <laughs> uh, I'm with the manga, but that's apparently like a very common practice to like cheat at least the background. So it's like, whatever, it's Japanese, it's quick, you know. So I don't, I don't hold comics to the same scrutiny where it's like, oh wait, people like print out their fucking comics. And then color them like what the, that's cheating like <laughs> it's not even tracing like <laughs> <laughs> oh man no i'm interested though i'm gonna add this to my uh wish list <clears throat> my problem is i got so much media i want to read uh or watch i'm just eternally behind but it's a good problem to have too much versus too little so yeah it's double edged sword what um in closing i'm gonna close out and shouldn't but i'm gonna play another hour of rome before i go to bed um (laughs) what are what are comics that are either like comparisons you would say or like just what you like that you're maybe trying to evoke doesn't (laughs) have what comics do you like really like and then do they apply to your book or not yeah um the the main character uh eddie i kind of take part Captain America part Spider-Man because he, he's, he's, he's got more of a, uh, a sense of honor and duty like, like Captain America, but he's still got this kind of a, 
smart alecky uh streak like like uh spidey does when you know when he's fighting and he's he's just kind of shooting off one-liners just try to he'll he'll, he'll do that it's it it really just I'm, I'm trying to invoke like old 80s and 90s comics when 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 you read it you get the sense of uh just a really good hero story hero versus villain uh Something just just something fun that, that that you're going to be able to read and escape the craziness of the uh, the day. I don't know if that's if I'm really expressing myself well enough to. No, you're fine. It's just I <clears throat> I listen and sometimes I'm wondering if there's like a delay in one of our internets because I'm like, yeah. So that that's why I'm like oh pausing sometimes because I'm like making sure there's not like some sort of delay. Um, no, man, it's cool. Uh, sounds like a fun time. I'm interested. How long are your books? They're not. They're not real long. They're like maybe 200 pages. Okay. It's, it's, Do you have any? Um, uh, I guess I'm curious. It's not a neg if you are, because you know Steven Spielberg filled film school. So don't don't think I am asking this as like, well, what are your credentials? But are you like collegially credentialed? Do you have any background before writing? Is this just like a just an interest and you're like taking your crack at it i i i I wanted to write comics when i was younger and i got into a situation where uh, i was i was kind of dealing with some anxiety and depression stuff and trying to find a way out of it and i saw that the best way to do it was to start writing i didn't know if they meant just writing about my feelings or writing in general and my wife said, why don't you take the idea for the comic you had and, and, and write it as a book? So I threw my laptop down on my kitchen table and I started going at it. And next thing you know, I'm 10 chapters in and I'm like, good God, I think I'm starting to write a book here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. It's uh, therapeutic. So that, yeah. that only lends to whatever shortcomings the book has or doesn't have. Uh, that definitely... I guess the insider scoop just adds to the um, when when I read it, it'll be like, oh, like this is this guy, this is you know organic. It's from the heart. It's got like layering of uh, your child interests and uh, it's therapeutic. It's you're personally invested making this. You yeah, know, I, I, I I have I, I have no illusions of me being you know the next you know Hemingway or anything. I'm. I'm just a I'm just a hack guy who wants to write some books. If people like them, that's great. If people don't like them, yeah, you know, I, I'm the, the uh, it's not for everybody. I, I I recognize that. So if people if if I can find people to read them and enjoy them, then I've done my job. Nice, yeah, man. Uh, if I like it, my problem is like you know I'm wanting to do Star Wars comic reviews of like Disney canon. <clears throat> Maybe I'll get into EU stuff eventually, but um, I don't know if you're a Star Wars guy or not, but I tried reading uh, cause Darth Talon. Uh, you know, I said it over there now, but I have her like prime sideshow statue. I've wanted it for years. Finally got it. <laughs> uh, great design. Um, and just, you know, that draw makes me want to read her books. Then I started reading the run she's from and I instantly like eye roll because it's like, Oh great. In the EU, 100, 150 years after Luke Scott, we're still doing a fucking Skywalkers are like the make or break for the universe. <laughs> At some point, this like heritage, you know, idea, like you can write someone else. It's just, it's fucking, I instantly roll my eyes. I'm like, are you kidding me? Another fucking Skywalker. Like I love Anakin and Luke's fine. You know, he's a good character, but I like bad guys. Um, I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, we're in fucking, you do anything and you're still stuck on this one thing. Like, it's so derivative. I instantly just I haven't followed up on it. Um, but yeah, I want to do Star Wars reviews. Because um, there's been some good stuff in Disney Star Wars comics. They've definitely helped try to mend fences narratively with the sequel <laughs> stuff you know they're, they're these writers are trying that i've read like there's mm -hmm. these uh 
it's this one shot series of like age of rebellion age of first or whatever he's like one shots of characters in different eras and like kylo i think he had a four issue run it's like okay like i mean there's not a lot but they're like they're clearly trying to like fix this you know in the multimedia and people don't give it the credence they deserve and I don't know how the High Republic is overall, but it's not a bad first issue. Um, actually, the artist found my review and Colin, we had a little back and forth. Like, hmm. I don't know what he's doing, but like, he's definitely someone on my my list of like, I wouldn't mind him drawing Meth Gator. Like, <laughs> 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 when I have when I have the money to make it, like, I you know, uh, he's definitely on my mind. He's I think foreign, so I don't think the Marvel that's the that's the value of finding foreign artists is. Unless they're like, I don't know if he's foreign, but like Art Germ, I like he's such a name. It doesn't matter who he draws for. He could totally go comic skate tomorrow, and people would cry for a minute. But like his art supersedes labels. <clears throat> That's the value of like foreign artists is that mm -hmm. they're just taking like contract jobs probably, and so they'll work for fucking comic skate. That's what's great. Like they're. They might look into it. They might know English and watch YouTube, but ultimately, like they're in another fucking country. It's just it's not at the forefront. They're looking for people to pay them to draw. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're like, especially Brazilians, I've had a couple of people, Brazilian artists, uh, when you like send them a dollar, that's like five bucks. So like doing the comic card, I don't know what a normal wage is, but like what's a dollar to us they're getting five bucks in their money so they're not really going to care if they're going to get canceled on twitter <laughs> like they're in fucking poverty as far as mm. the world's concerned so <laughs> that, that that is a benefit of getting foreign guys from like malaysia or brazil or something um so yeah keep that in mind definitely i would i would actually encourage foreign artists because my experience it doesn't seem they care there is yeah. Wokies, you know, whatever. You'll look at, oh, this guy's foreign, but then you look at their thing and they got pronouns. It's like, oh, man, that already makes me worry, you know. I always, like, my thing uh, is someone wanting to create, just waiting for the money to do so. Um, My idea of comic skate, and you know, like the C2E2 thing doesn't help right now with the uh, eyes on our sphere, comic skate, but uh, my view... I think for maybe advancing and really moving the needle back to normalcy is uh, we can't just look in our little circle in our little hug box of mainly conservative, you know, creators, artists we might have to start trapping people Might have to like trick some people and be like, cause then if enough people with the, uh, you know, at least medium cloud or serviceable art, you know, get hoodwinked by comic skate and ha have their name possibly a big campaign plastered with their name as like the artist for nazi comics mm -hmm. at some points like oh, whatever man like people need jobs you know who cares yeah <laughs> that's how you deflate it is by if anything pay them better it's like god you know what? yeah like i i love trans and uh uh diversity blah 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 but fucking comic skate pays me. I didn't make this at Marvel. You know, that's how you win the money. Most of the time money talks and it's not me promoting capitalism necessarily. Cause I think that's a big part of our social ills is capitalism. And we're just, we're, I don't know how you think of this, but I think we're following through with the evil that is capitalism is that it's godless. It's soulless. And, uh, you know you can apply it to agenda mm. so even though all these people are communists they're using the vessel of capitalism to destroy or it's not even that they will destroy because like look at china they're pretty capitalist in how they run things they just control the capitalists doing it you know mm, yeah but yeah um yeah i think we kind of this is the problem with the right the right is so stuck on dogma based truths bible or whatever you know that they can't conceive conceptually doing bad stuff for a good reason 
for a long-term good. It's like, well, you know, if I rob enough people, I can build a church or whatever, you know, they, they <laughs> that, that doesn't come to mind. Cause it's like, well, oh, that was sin. That's why Rorschach is not a hero. Rorschach mm-hmm. is like the right. And then Osmandius is like the left. Both are falling in this kind of dogmas that are huge blind spots. They're both the right at certain times. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what you think of that. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's. I mean, I've I've I have no problem with capitalism. I mean, I I have bills to pay, and if I, <laughs> if I can if I can sell stuff and and my books, or if I can, you know, sell sell any kind of merch and and, and help pay some bills and buy my kids some clothes, and then I'm I'm all for it. But yeah, the, the, some people can take it a lot farther than what it should be, and. That's where you have the issues. Yeah. Uh, maybe this comment that I'll add something. Uh, back he says, Angus, no, it's corporatism is what's making things worse. It's just Eric is economically retarded. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, 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 I've heard this, this angle. Like, well, it's not capitalism, it's corporatism. Um, I would say corporatism is just a like, super saiyan of capitalism you're just seeing capitalism being utilized by agenda-based corporations um and yeah i I think the founding fathers um when they set things up this is the blind spot they did not realize they're very aware they made a very smart slow government that's really hard to change things the, this was the factor they had no insight to. They had no idea that, uh, you know, like what FDR did, breaking up monopolies and stuff. Um, you know, that was kind of, it seems inbuilt to like be a progression of things. They did not foresee all the broken up companies being on the same page. And mm-hmm. so like this was, this was the Achilles heel, I think. It's not even government policy or whatever. It's like collective consciousness of all the money people. I don't think I, I don't think they ever had a foresight for this. Everyone's talking about, well, you know, if they would have known, they would have wrote more detail of the Second Amendment and specified it doesn't matter the barrel length or the ma- magazine capacity. Well, like, no, no, it's this. They did not foresee money having this kind of effect Hmm. you know it's like they made they set up a government to be lobby based on single issues more or less what i've learned from like government uh classes um but yeah i don't think they foresaw money buying lobbies (laughs) (laughs) and yeah i just i don't know the what i wanted to add is if you haven't seen it uh i think what really reinforces my disdain for capitalism is a movie it's not that it, i'm not a communist that's not my alternative i don't know what the alternative is like well clearly it's not communism i don't know what is it's just i'm i'm at the point where i'm aware this is a problem you know that's where i'm at i don't know if anyone else is like come to this point and like aha you know superman red sun we got to make a luther economy like and that's the fix i don't know <laughs> don't know what the luther economy is but the movie nightcrawler with jake gyllenhaal have you seen that i've not seen it holy shit uh i actually did a film essay and it was for like a doctor this guy was going he was a doctorate candidate at that point he was a, like masters or whatever but he was going for like philosophy and he's like reading Heidegger and stuff names I'm aware of, but I don't know what they said, you know? And, um, so he's like a well-rounded, it wasn't just like movie nerd. He's like a really smart guy. And he was black too. And he had like dread braids or whatever he tied up. Like he wasn't like a conventional professor, like in his look or anything, but he was fucking smart. And it's just, it's funny. You think like, I don't think about it. I was like, that was a black guy, but like in hindsight, and then we're talking about Eric all the time. It's like, fucking what a horrible example of lead of uh, success for black people. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, he, uh, 
you know, I talked to him off and on outside of class, so I really respected him and his insight and whatever I could pull from him. And uh, there's only like a couple assignments. It's a weird class. There's like pretty much no homework. We just had to do three papers after certain stages of teaching. And uh, the last one was an essay. So you had to pick like a film or something. So I did Nightcrawler. And the whole thing was like dissecting its capitalist, you know, narrative. So Nightcrawler, that's like the subtext. It's not necessarily obvious, but I think it will be once since I've told you to like kind of have this in mind. The whole movie is kind of about, I think, subtextually about how like capitalism unvettered, this makes us prey upon each other. It makes us evil. You know, it's like when the drive is just money, everyone else is competition. You know, and it's like it's it's very kind of explicitly in a predatory manner how they depict it. Mm -hmm. It's all under the guise of like a guy directionless and then he sees a film crew for a wreck he's like what are you doing you're like oh yeah man this, if it bleeds it leads man this is gonna make us much money for the news and he's like huh so he starts googling cameras and news crew stuff and everything he just starts doing it solo and builds up and it's a really good narrative and it's really tight film too uh I want to say it's like someone from the Suez, the first Suicide Squad was behind it. Let me look it up just to make sure I'm not mistaking myself. Uh, Night Crawler film, ten year old film. Holy shit! <laughs> I just showed Rookie this recently. Um, Dave Dan Gilroy. Let me see his. So he did. He was a writer for Kong Skull Island. Um, so he's only, done, he's only directed a couple movies. He did this uh, legal drama with Denzel called Roman J. Israel Esquire. It's about a civil rights advocate. I don't know. Since it's got Denzel, I'll check it out because he's not a Wokey. So. And then a movie called Velvet Buzzsaw. So those are the three, three films he's directed, but Nightcrawler is a start. He's also a writer on The Born Legacy. Real Steel movie called Chasers in the 90s. So, yeah, it's a really, really cool movie. I mean, don't read the wiki because you'll spoil yourself, but I'm seeing wiki so you have like a bookmark on Twitter to like check it out. Um, I would suggest going to the library, they probably got a copy if it's not on streaming. But, yeah, man, uh, your stuff sounds really interesting and, um, appreciate you coming on uh, abruptly you know it's just <laughs> whim of things <laughs> I, was, uh, I was i was i was just sitting around watching w watching youtube and i saw that you had your uh, stream up i'm like well, i gotta watch black angus see what's up well That's... thank you i appreciate <laughs> it um yeah especially with everyone live and stuff evs double trash cast in one day fuck <laughs> <laughs> um no, man, it's good stuff. I love this community. Uh, like this, is like it feels like CG reborn, especially with them trying to uh, do another con. I um, I don't know if it'll answer, but I messaged him like, "Hey, um, do you have like a specific city or state in mind? Because like I'll lend my help to like start calling places if you want. Like, because like the way he was talking today was like, yeah, people like talk a lot about cons, and no one fucking helps. And it's like." Oh, like I just never thought, you know, he's pretty connected. He's getting toys and shit made. You wouldn't think he'd need mm -hmm. help, but I guess this is a blind spot in CG. No one's fucking pulling their weight, uh, in this regard, you know, we're just relying on maybe we could go to this con, you know, of the establishment, which would be fine. Again, I think we should, you know, gay up them. Uh, reverse gay up, I guess, but uh, we got found out already with C2E2, so mm -hmm. I guess the word's out now on us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, everyone can go sub to Nerdway and uh, follow his links, uh, investigate, check out his book, give him a few bucks on Amazon. Uh, looks like you can get on Kindle for three bucks or ten bucks paperback. Mm -hmm. so uh help a small creator in our community and give him feedback tell him what he's doing right what he's doing wrong and uh Ab absolutely i'm not gonna block anybody if they do it 
<laughs> and nice. and I and I can pro I can promise no 3D assets in my books. Nowhere. All AI. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's the future. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Bob? God? Just getting out of here. Uh, go, f go. Uh, check in the description. Go uh, sub to BTN if you have. And Nerdway who's right here with me. Ending now. Thank you. And uh, talk to you Thursday for sure, if not sooner. Farewell. Go watch Katie. Do a Katie Angus raid, if you will, if you want to continue watch stuff. Farewell. <laughs>